Good evening and welcome to Drakenheim. This is the Dungeon Dudes weekly Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition live stream campaign. My name is Monty Martin, running the campaign as Dungeon Master. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin, playing Sebastian Crow, the half-elf shadow sorcerer. And we're joined today by our good friends. Jill Denitis, playing Veo Senya, the tabaxi gloom stalker ranger. And Joe O'Gorman, playing Pluto Jackson, the human battle master. And thank you for joining us once again. If you're just tuning in for the very first time, Kelly and I post new videos every Thursday on our YouTube channel where we cover everything Dungeons and Dragons, including advice for dungeon masters and guides for players. You'll also find prior episodes from this campaign right up there as well for your viewing pleasure too. You can also join us on Tuesday nights when we record the campaign live on Twitch. Check us out at 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube. At youtube.com slash dungeon dudes underscore for Twitch. No underscore for YouTube. Because <laughs> we're consistent. Just to keep you confused. Just to keep you on your toes. Um, we are also very pleased to announce that Dungeons of Drakenheim is now available as an audio-only podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Spotify. Kyle has been working through our backlog, getting the episodes up there. And from what I hear, we might be having a deluge or deluge, deluge of the backlog because I think he's almost through. We've only been posting one a week so Ooh. far, but we might be almost all the way and just release Ooh. the floodgates on all of Drakenheim. Nice. So... Kyle's been working really, really hard on that. So big thanks, thank you. Kyle. Thanks, Kyle. Sweet. Also, don't forget to check out the merch store. Links down below at Teespring. You can find your favorite shirts uh, like Yes, 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 uh, Dragon Force. Uh, and if you want to take a look, bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. This week's episode of Dungeons of Drakenheim is sponsored by our great friends at Dimension 20. We are spreading the news that Brennan Lee Mulligan and a team of veteran college humor comedians are back for season three of their D&D live play series, The Unsleeping City. If you love exploring the dark, mysterious underbelly of a fantasy city, it's really worth checking out the first few episodes on the Dimension 20 YouTube channel. From what I understand, they've also let me know that they are going to have a marathon on YouTube of their first show, which was Fantasy High on their YouTube channel. Uh, that's like insider information, apparently. It's a secret that this weekend they're going to have their first season up on YouTube for like a you marathon. You just told everybody their secret. To secret. I just told the whole world. Oh. Um, but it's it's an early idea of the, of the, the concept of how Brennan has applied 5e D, D to a modern setting and it's really worth checking out i really have quite been enjoying watching it it's so funny uh, you can watch the full series and much more by subscribing at dropout.tv and you can get 50 percent off the first month using the code roll 50 follow the links in the description below for more information with that let's return to the ruins <laughs> Drakenheim is no more. Struck by a falling star, the city bathed in eldritch fire on that woeful eve. The tumultuous aftermath brought chaos, families torn asunder, and a kingdom shattered. Fifteen years later, monsters stalk the haunted streets of Drakenheim. Caught amidst rival factions struggling to rule the rubble, three unlikely partners venture forth into the crumbling city in search of riches, renown, and revenge. Welcome back to the ruins of Drakenheim. When last we left our heroes, they were making their way up the grand shattered tower of the Amethyst Academy, the tallest structure in the city of Drakenheim, which was which was broken in two by the meteor when it fell on that faithful day 15 years ago. Yet the structure itself still stands, rent through the middle with the upper reaches of the tower still floating in space over the city in defiance of gravity. Our heroes have worked their way up through the lower chambers of the tower and are now heading through the various classrooms and lecture halls of the academy. But they have now found a scrying 
chamber in the academy where a great orb has been set which Sebastian now plans to use to conjure an arcane eye which they can use as a magical hall monitor <laughs> this is the hall monitor's pass of the Amethyst Academy oh cool and survey the halls to see if they can find the locations of the treasures that they seek their quest now is to reclaim the tower their ultimate goal to seize the staff of power the symbol of office for the archmage of the amethyst academy for this tower and use it to reactivate the nexus at the top of the tower and also to reclaim the teleportation chambers below you are in the scrying chamber the orb pulses before you in this square chamber and the runes begin to flirt up all around flit up all around in the air uh, as you go to place your hands on it it's a large crystalline orb about a foot across on a on a twirling pedestal made of filigreed silver which is clasped in place upon it and there's this railing around it and steps leading up to it that you can reach out and and then touch it and interestingly enough as well in front of the the scrying orb is a small lectern and a pen and pencil and then as you step up the steps towards the lectern one of the the chairs one of the steps lifts up and becomes a chair I did so not expect fancy. this to be this comfortable. That's convenient. Um, so I sit down. I roll up my sleeves. All right, guys. Going to take a look around this tower. Can you guys just make sure I don't get interrupted? And uh, I'm going to close the door. I'm going to lock it if it has like an indoor lock. And then mostly just kind of lean my back into it as I observe... Uh, old Sebastian here getting his uh, ball on. Yeah, I also go stand by the door and just like keep an ear towards it. I place my hands on the orb. Make an intelligent saving throw. <laughs> <laughs> his uh, mind is uh, shattered. <laughs> start. I'm going to roll the dice that failed me last time and it won't do it tonight. Surprise. It failed me. <laughs> it failed me. <laughs> I got a five. Okay. Sebastian. As you place your hands on the orb, you can feel a wellspring of arcane power fill through your body. Sebastian's eyes turn milk white for a moment before streaks of arcane light begin to glow from his irises. And this purple energy begins to go through his blood veins from his hands and up his arms Ugh. and then reaching up his neck and forming these and you can actually see it almost causing the veins to bulge out around his eyes and it looks like his eyes themselves are almost going to pop out of his skull uh. as he holds on to the orb sebastian you feel this wash of vertigo take over your body as your consciousness is flung up through the floors of the tower so you just feel like your body your soul is being ripped out of your body and you fly up all the through the floors of the tower up 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 and you f suddenly feel like you are miles and miles over the city itself looking down on the entire city until you realize that gravity is still pulling your body and you're pulled flung down through all the tower floors and in this moment, you almost get a sense of the entirety of the tower of the Amethyst Academy. And also somehow a connection to the other towers throughout the world as well that feel almost infinite in scope. And as your mind opens up to the, the arcane links across the ley lines that stretch across the globe, you almost feel like you are pulled under the earth and the world turns inside out and then you are looking down upon the entire globe itself before you are slingshot metaphysically back into the tower the entire process causes you to take 30 points of psychic damage <laughs> What do we? Should, it, should, does, does he just? Do I like snap back after that? 
Um, or am I still like holding? You're it? still holding on. Gah! Well, ah! Veo, he's just doing his thing, right? Let's just watch him. <laughs> Do you have like, ah! you know, when you like get electrocuted and you need like a broom, and you're not supposed to touch the person yourself? Do you have like a piece of wood that we can like? Well, like, does he just look like he's just normal, what? or is he screaming? No, he's he's, he's screaming. Like, man, these orbs look painful. <laughs> I wouldn't Whoa. want to be touching that Whoa. thing right Whoa. now. I don't know what to Whoa. do. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so the two of you, you see Sebastian is screaming and <laughs> spasming. Um, and, like, there's this froth coming out of his oh, no. mouth and blood leaking out both of his nostrils and his okay. ears. <laughs> I mage hand and, like, mage hand to, like, karate chop his arms off the thing. <laughs> Just to see if I move his arms. Just so I don't have to touch him. Okay. <laughs> you go to mage hand his, his arm. Um, and try to try to pull it away, and a, as the arcane force tries to pull at Sebastian, mm -hmm. uh, Sebastian, do you want to release your hand? I'm going to try to control it. You're going to try to control it. I'm going to try to it, gain control. So as you as you try to karate chop his his hand away, he's going to hold on. Okay. He, he's trying to hold on. So Sebastian, you can make a. Um, you, the two of you can make opposed arcana checks because the hand is trying to... Or when I get disadvantage yeah. because yeah. I'm exhausted. Six. <laughs> Seven. Okay. Sebastian's <laughs> hand barely stays in place on the orb. I mean, I guess he really wants to do this, but... Uh, uh, yeah. Pluto, I don't know what to do. He just really wants the magic. Can I try to control it? You, you can, but... It's up to these two okay. to decide what they, they, they want to do. I'm I'm worried, but without a frame of reference, like I just assume this is how they've always <laughs> used arcane <gasps> eyes. So I'm watching gleefully. Like <laughs> I know you're bleeding and stuff, but I'm like, wow. <laughs> must be must be really hard to be a hall monitor. A lot of they ask a lot from you, but yeah, man, process is a process. You know what where am I to stand in the way of their <laughs> their traditions? <laughs> So I'm just watching, big smile on my face. <laughs> All right. Sebastian? Yeah. You can make another intelligent saving throw. Uh, what dice? What dice am I going to roll? I'm going to I'm going to roll yeah. old, old, you two of them. Old <laughs> Faithful, <laughs> my first set of metal dice I ever bought. You're not going to let me down. I'm making an arcana check. You're making no. an intelligent saving. An intelligent throw. saving throw. Okay, thank you. Better. 19. Okay. As it looks like the tower is going to take you on another loop of yeah. this extra dimensional trip, you <sighs> solidify your mental grip over it and lock your consciousness in into the orb. Yeah. And you are looking at yourself. Guys, I've hacked the mainframe. <laughs> uh, uh, are you okay? <laughs> I'm... I'm great. <laughs> Why? Well, mm, hold on. I can see me. I can see you. I can see. I can see all of us. You can see yourself, and you are suddenly aware of your own body. Um, but when you look down, there's nothing there. Have I? Have I always looked this good? <laughs> Debatable. Pretty. Pretty handsome. <laughs> you're bleeding at your like eyes. Yeah. And stuff. <laughs> I mean, you're not at your best right now, to be honest. <laughs> I've looked worse. I'll do some housekeeping. I'll go up and like. Get some of the blood. I, and some of the, dab, dab the blood. <laughs> Making me beautiful. Can I hear him? Can I? Is he talking? Uh, yeah, he can, he he can talk. It's kind of like mumbly, like he's not all there, but he can talk. Hold on, I'm gonna try to move. I'm gonna try to move the eye. Can I move the eye? Around? Yeah, you can. Oh, this is weird. Okay, guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna scout ahead. Okay, we're, we're, I'm gonna go up. Right. That's where we want to go. You go where you need to go, big guy. All right. Up and then if We're you can go you. down to the basement. Ooh, check out I, the teleporter. Yeah. I leave. I, I, I can pass through the wall, uh, the doors, within, not the walls. Within the Amethyst Academy, this arcane eye is capable of passing through the doors of the Academy. Most of the doors. There may be some doors that it cannot pass through, but it cannot pass through the walls. I, I go out the door okay. that we came in. And um, what what you actually notice is that as you, when you are, take on this arcane eye, you can see that there is a spectral peephole about one inch in diameter that you couldn't see before on the doors. That is the spot that the arcane eye can pass through in all all the doors. All right. 
Now, are we are we talking to Sebastian in his body there? Yes. So he's there in his body, but mentally he is elsewhere. So, so if he, I mentally talk to you through this bond, am I talking yeah, to the spirit talk. that yeah. is going around, no, or am I, I talking to still you in your body? I, I mean, I'm still in my body, but I can see more. Yeah, but where is Sebastian? Is he there, or is he there? I'm oh. everywhere. <laughs> I'm That's everywhere. why I'm like, can you hear me now? I can, can you hear me now? Math. Can you hear me now? So I'm just working on the math. Can you hear me now? <laughs> I, I fly out into the hallway, and the first thing I'm going to do is look to see if there's any more enemies coming. Okay, you fly out into the halls. The hallway looks clear. It's still quite wet from the destroyed uh, water elemental. Whoops. But Clean up it's... in aisle four. <laughs> All right. Guys, coast is clear. I'm making a break for the library. That's where I'm going to head to. On this floor? Yeah, that, that's where the entrance to the library is, and then I'm going to head up from there. So I head towards okay. the library entrance. You round the corner, and you come to a long hallway, a hallway that almost spans the entire length of the tower. Um, except it seems to go on forever in both directions like you look down it and as you come into the hallway it just extends and extends and it sort of begins to curve at either side you can see that there are two there's the way that you came and another way leading off of this hallway and then there are two grand sets of double doors that you can see here so again the, this hallway here is curved almost perfectly circular and then there are two doors that you can see see going into it and beside each of the doors um there is a large metal plate with a handle on it with a small sign that says after hours drop box i think i found the library guys uh but there's a hallway here that looks really weird it goes on forever I, th I think I'm going to avoid that. I'm just going to go for the library. Sounds smart. I, I fly through the one of the sets of double doors. Okay. The two sets of double doors, um, one here is, the first one is carved with the motif of fire. And there are great creatures of flame, dragons, elemental creatures, salamanders, all echoing around this doorway the one immediately beside it is carved with depictions of creatures of elemental air which doorway would you like to go to fire as you go to the fire door you can see that further down as the hallway curves there's a third doorway carved in the depiction of elemental earth you pass through the fire doorway you step into a massive rectangular chamber float but yeah metaphysically step <laughs> this chamber as before doesn't quite it doesn't quite seem like the ringed hallway outside it would actually be able to contain it with the circumference of the the circle but looking into the the rectangular room that you're in it is it is massive it's about 120 feet on each side and 100 feet on the other so it's a rough rectangle and as you look up you can see that high above you are is a mass of crackling energy and floating rock for the tower extends all the way up here to the base of the floating tower up above. And then you can see through the wreckage, it continues even further past that. This room is the most gigantic library you have ever seen. The shelves are lined and packed with myriad books and tomes on every conceivable subject all along all the walls and then in the center of the room are two great pillars 
which are holding up a bridge which crosses over the span. And the pillars, the underside of the bridge is impossibly holding bookshelves that have books in place in defiance of gravity. The sides of the bridge are lined with bookshelves. Um, and then the bridge spans two galleries that look down and all the galleries as well on that level that you can see all are filled with bookshelves. The, ta the, uh, um, the area in front of you the floor is covered with rubble, spill books and destroyed pa and destroyed papers all flitter through the air over the sound of crackling energy. And there are several large tables and reading rooms over which you can see the emaciated forms of several dead apprentices still clutching their like clutching book bags and a few of them looking like they were trying to run out of the room a few of them have been crushed under the rock that fell here as well and their bodies um look like they have been consumed almost um as if something just sucked all the water and air out of them and they're still clothed in very clearly the robes of an apprentice of the amethyst academy you see perhaps another that might have been a senior mage, uh, one that um, has a, a, a corpse that has a pair of glasses and has what looks like to be some sort of rod or staff and six rings on the hand. And as you look up the rest of the tower, the galleries and the bridges continue in this crisscross that as they go up all the levels through the tower, there's another set of bridges and galleries. And there are doors where some of, the, some of the bookshelves are stopped by doors that just come in from no direction. And it continues all the way up to the top, where again, there are these floating pieces of rock. And you can see this almost this storm of delirium in the midst of the middle of the tower where there's crackling energy kind of residuating from where the tower was broken and pieces of the meteor still floating in the air and pieces of delirium. In fact, there's several large pieces of delirium all scattered about on the ground here as well. What you see though in this chamber, um, along one of the bridges is a small moving creature looks like a woman that looks strangely familiar might be a halfling or a gnome and you recognize her as Gemma Oscar Yoren's apprentice and she is walking across the bridge and there are climbing along the walls and up across the bookshelves there is a pack of undead of emaciated undead creatures that are clinging off of the bookshelves and climbing up and down the walls and all of them are looking at books and they they look at one and then they stuff it into a bag that they're each carrying on a, on a sack um and one or two and one or two of them are on the ground picking up pieces of delirium guys we have company company like i like see mages gamma not gamma yeah wait which was which was the one i chopped the arm off of i think it was think the guy it was that the, was the guy that he yeah. was killed yeah we murdered him <laughs> <laughs> i mean he unfortunately had an accident yeah that was marco he had, he had a big accident. we're gonna have to come through this room but looks like there's a lot of undead here so we'll have to be prepared for that now, do we want to fight them or do we want to run away from them? We have to get to the top of this tower. Yeah. We, um, I, I actually, so I move the eye uh, so that I'm in a position where I can see Gamma. Mm -hmm. uh, still trying to stay far enough mm -hmm. away that like she wouldn't notice if she had like some sort of way to see the eye. Where is she headed? She steps out onto the bridge yeah, and far. you watch as she casts a spell that you recognize she's casting the levitate spell and she steps off the bridge and she floats down and walks over to 
one of the one of the undead creatures, the ghouls, gestures over to Gemma, to where the the one with the six rings is, and she walks over to it and picks up the rod and cuts off the hand and stuffs it into her pack. She's collecting items, guys. She found a six ringer. She's taking its staff and its rings. Well, it probably means, too, that if you're seeing her now and she's just collecting stuff, that they haven't been here for long. So... I'm going to keep going up Yeah. from where she... She was coming down, right? She cuts off the head and then... Uh, she cuts off the hand and then she proceeds to cut off the head as well and stuff it into the, into the bag. And, <laughs> That's not necessary. And then starts... Yeah, going down the, the back and pulling out what she can of the spinal cord. Uh, this is getting intense, guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna look for uh, for more, but I think there's a fight that we can anticipate in that room. Hmm. Um, I'm gonna see what else I can find, and I start moving up towards the the hole in the tower. Okay. You fly up hundreds of feet towards the breach in the middle of the tower. It is... The the breach itself looks like it is carved a rent that might be as much as a good, like, one-sixth of the length of the tower has just been blown out. And it is this... As you raise up, you can see that you can very clearly, once you're up here, you can see the direction the meteor shard fell through because it, it carves off a direction that starts that the where the library is is the low point of the rent. And so it all kind of rakes up slightly towards the point where the first impact happened. And it is a sea of rubble up here. Several buildings, at least three floors of the tower are all ripped open along the top part and also along the bo- bottom part which is, is crumbling away and leaning down but it's al- you can almost make out as the rubble floats around in space around here and this arcane energy is visibly cracking between the two pieces as they as pieces of masonry float about and when they come close to each other sometimes they slam into each other and a bolt of lightning strikes off of them or several pieces will get close to each other and some lightning will crackle and pull them close together as if each is trying to fight for its own sense of gravity. And it lets you kind of see the the furniture still floating in the air. There are several corpses of members of the Academy that are floating dead in the air, grasping at books and wands and spell books. The blown apart remains of several shield guardians and other constructs that would have guarded these halls and of course a swirling flock of books the pages of the books and the books just float around the air here like birds flocking almost as if they have a little bit of a mind of their own just as the way that they're caught in the wind which is howling up this high over the city for you are higher even than the clock tower at this point looking up onto several of the chambers you see that one of the chambers here has been crashed open and there is a large arcane magic circle in the center of the room and there surrounded by several tables and a few other and two hulking undead monstrosities with machinery coming out of them is Oscar Yorin. And he is going across several different tables and he is taking pieces of the mages. And you can see their hands, their heads, these body parts of them that have been collected and he is stitching them together and he keeps turning back over to this tome that he's found that he's reading and he looks looks at the tome comes back and starts stitching things around again and as he does so um leading the effort in his hand he is clutching an obsidian black staff tipped with an orb of delirium 
it is the staff of power that he holds. Guys, we have work to do. I, I explain all that to you. Like, I'm saying it as I'm seeing it. Okay. So was he... He was not... He was lower than the break. Yes. He's under the yeah. break. And he's in an open in, room. In his workshop, where, where in the, the room that he's turned into a makeshift workshop, there is a rope ladder that has been strung up from that room up to the, the, the top part of the, of the tower. Um, and as... And another ghoul climbs down the ladder and drops off a sack of body parts. So we know where Oscar is. Should I keep going up higher to see what's up higher in the tower? Or is this, like, we found our primary target. We need to get that staff from him. We need to get the staff. But we're using the, but how long do you have on the, how long well, can only you control the eye for? Once a day, right? That you can only use this spell. Yeah, so should I, I should keep going. I think scouting. it's worth keep going. Yeah. Keep going and look at it you're... all and we can always. So I want to float over to the rope ladder just because I don't want to mess with like all the crazy stuff happening. Mm-hmm. I'm, my assumption here is that the rope ladder has a safe passage through the disaster. And so I'm going to fly over to it and just go up along okay. the rope ladder. You fly up around the rope ladder into a series of halls and chambers that look like they are meant to be the apartments, living quarters, and personal workshops for the highest members of the Amethyst Academy here. You are in a hallway of similar construction to the lower levels, and there are a few of Oscar Yorin's ghouls that are collecting bits of arcane objects and items that they have found in the halls above and assembling them together to bring them down. Okay. Is there any way up further? It continues. There, the, the elevator room is still here because it continues over. But of course, as you come over to it, it's a similar construction as it was before. The four elevators all flanking a fountain this one which has been designed with several of the creatures from the clock tower the modrons and they are working at they're active they're working at the fountain and they are they scoop the buckets and then drop them down and then scoop a bucket and then drop it down and then scoop a bucket out and then drop it down there's just four of the of these circular shaped modrons doing this and they're the ones with the wings that they scoop down into the fountain with a bucket and then drop the water back down and they're just repeating this cycle <laughs> the the tower the shafts here though are empty and all continue up another couple levels I want to find the nexus so I'm, I'm going to keep moving up I'm like I'm like reciting this all to you ooh Modrons mm-hmm. <laughs> oh maybe the Amethyst Academy might have some idea about the clock tower too maybe we can take the Modrons and recruit them back to the clock tower to continue fixing it and then we build more Modrons yeah because I, I have a feeling that if these Modrons are being controlled by I assume Oscar maybe the staff of power does it or maybe that like, you can hear something auditory that like gives mm-hmm. us more information on how to like tell them what to do mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. can I hear or am I just able to see you can you can he- you can hear you you have to switch between mm. whether you, I believe you have to switch between hearing and seeing oh. no I think you can do both let me double check because I was wondering Pretty if sure. you could hear like any like zero one zero mm-hmm. <laughs> are they saying the same words they do at the yeah, tower yeah maybe you could get hear some like trigger word also that's maybe good. I should go listen to what Oscar Yorn's saying listen in yeah it's visual information only would he know okay. though would he know yep i can't hear i can only see mm. yep so i continue up you just mm-hmm. learn how to like i can't not i don't have time to read lips <laughs> yeah get right in his face mm-hmm. <laughs> is there an eye in front of me? so i'm gonna keep going so up yeah you come up to the highest part of the elevator shafts which open which only lead to a single set of double doors which have been broken open and before those double doors there are you can see that 
the creatures have Oscar Yoren's minions have made it this far but they've opened up this door and there are several destroyed creatures all broken apart at this doorway there um, be, before the doorway is a crackling mass of swirling elemental energy a veritable <coughs> uh, the Excuse other me. side of it is a veritable maelstrom of elemental creatures and at the center of it you can see leading up towards this is this single focusing lens upon which is gripping the archmage and a part of her body has been ripped away the maelstrom though continues around her um completely enveloping the chamber beyond in a mass of this erratic arcane energy she's she's dead right <coughs> half of her body has been rip, ripped yeah. away um and the and she's floating underneath this focusing lens around which is a swirling maelstrom of arcane energy you can surmise from what you know from outside that the tower probably continues further up from here that you're probably looking at the base of the nexus guys I think I found the nexus and I found the archmage it doesn't look appealing it's going to be tough to get in there do you think having the staff would help probably but what's more concerning is why hasn't Oscar tried maybe he has there's a bunch of dead corpses here undead creatures so he's tried something and it didn't go as planned hmm. probably warded against I, things entering I don't know if I want to fly my arcane eye into what's going on in this room I'm nervous about what effect that might have but I think this is where we need to get to after we take care of Oscar. And get the staff? Yeah, we need the... Do we, we do the nexus first and then do the portal? Yeah, the portal in the basement is afterwards. <laughs> mm -hmm. We need to kill Oscar. We need to get the staff. Okay. We need to go to the nexus, figure out how to activate it, and then we clear out the basement. Flying around in, in the nexus as this arcane storm swirls around it it looks to be that there are several broken bodies of uh, other creations of Oscar Yorin that have been swept up in the maelstrom itself um, and as if they've tried to enter here but this arcane energy has been tearing them apart do you guys agree that so, I think we're good with this part of the tower. I think I've observed everything I need to here. I'm going to head back down. Yeah, I think. So what I want to do, just to speed up this process, I also want to check out the basement. Mm -hmm. So I'm probably just, if I fly into an elevator shaft, can I just like... Whoosh? Can I take an elevator? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So now that I've witnessed this, I don't want to go in that room with the eye. So I'm going to fly back to the elevator shaft, find one, and just go down. And f fireball all the way down? Yeah. Yeah, you do so. You fly all the way down to the lowest level of the tower. No, 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 no. Which the elevators, again, end in a single set of double doors here. So there's the elevator room itself, and then a set of double doors, which you can fly through and go down a set of stairs that lead to a room that has a large desk and a mist-filled archway. And leading up to the mist-filled arch, beside the mist-filled archway is this large arcane-looking contraption that looks like it has a conveyor belt attached to it. And there are several boxes beside it. And then a attached to the boxes 
is this very large um, pane of glass in a circular shape and a chair. And there's a set of doors that lead into another room off of this chamber. And the way that the chamber is built is that there is a set of railings that would lead anybody from that set of double doors would have to would walk through this archway or the other other way around and it's the archway is like filled with like a mist the archway is filled with a mist and then beside the archway is this along the other side of the railing is this long table that has a leather conveyor belt along Mm -hmm. it that leads the conveyor belt leads into this large metal box that has this large circular pane of glass coming off of it and several floating arcane runes and a chair and then the conveyor belt continues out on the other side of the box and there are several um, trays of wood that are resting all piled up on the one side of the conveyor belt is this like an x-ray machine for luggage <laughs> is that is that what you're describing right now? Do you put your stuff in the guys? <laughs> I I see I see this is I I don't know what this is, but it looks like there's something. You put something in a box. You put it through a machine. Somebody looks at it through a window, and then it comes out the other end. Should I fly through the machine? <laughs> no. Fly into the box. <laughs> no. I'm hearing both answers. <laughs> Um, it's okay. like angel and devil on your shoulder, you know. <laughs> you can listen to. Do it. Give in to your desires. Uh, be I'm safe because you're desire. already hurt. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna try something else here. This also doesn't seem promising, but I'm gonna go for it. I, I try to fly through the archway. <laughs> okay, you uh, you fly through the archway, and all of a sudden there is a crackle of energy and the eyeball pops and you are shot right back into your body. (gasps) Yeah, see, that was probably a bad idea. (laughs) Good thing it wasn't your real body. Oh, man. I don't feel good. Do you need, like, I mean... Um, Healing? Sit on on the steps. There's a lot of blood. You're bleeding. Here, let me... And I press to digitate the blood away. I don't don't feel great. Uh, But... We have a couple mages to kill. Oh, is it is it bad that I'm really necklace. excited to, to? I think we're all excited. <laughs> Revenge. He's just. But oh. I also think we need a short rest. <laughs> you think we? Need... Okay. Um, or I can just hold on. I, I <laughs> rifle through my bag, um, and Prob- I'm gonna drink a potion of superior healing. Okay. That's one of the big ones. How much is that? Uh, the superior healing. Uh, I think that one is the really big one. 84 plus 8. So that that's the one that does 40. No, oh, yeah, you Ooh. need that. I need it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Does anybody have like a regular healing potion? Like not greater, because I don't want to waste that. I need like small amounts of healing. I mean, we could take a short rest. I'm just Ooh. worried. We know exactly where Gemma and Oscar are right, right now. now. Yeah. Uh, I have a regular, if you want it. You have a regular? Yeah. I would love a regular. And that's 10, right? Just a regular old mm-hmm. potion of healing. It's yours. Perfect. <laughs> How are you? I'm fine. Okay. <laughs> Everything's fine. Are yeah. you guys ready to go kill? I could do a short rest. Now though. are we? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I can always do a short rest. Let's okay. go. Let's go murder something. I don't want to waste any time. We've we've observed. We've spied. Now's our chance to get the drop on them. We know where they are. If I'm not mistaken, how long would it have taken me? Like, okay. Hmm. Also, I want to know, I guess, which side of the room was he on? In terms of when you saw him. Can you can you minor illusion? Like a small... Di- a minor a illusion. Di- diagram. A, a, a map. <laughs> a, like, painted map of, like... And I'm like... So the upper reaches of the tower... The library continues for about another seven levels. So the from the bottom of the library to where the break point is, mm-hmm. is 
almost 300 feet. Oh, okay. Um, and then, and the, uh, yeah, Sebastian couldn't hear anything while he was an arcane eye, although I did say a few things that you could hear, but, um, my bad, but so you don't know what the, the conditions for hearing will be, but the, and then the library goes off and then the library is the low point. So you can imagine that from what Sebastian describes, there's like a slope sloping down into the library part of the tower, which actually continues all the way up and past the break point as well. Okay. So I have a potion of flying. I'm thinking if I can get above Oscar, that's probably going to be my best vantage point to be able to hide within almost like the rubble that is above him. You can use the hook shot too. Keep in mind that yeah. we probably like for, for me and Pluto we're going to have to fight our way up. So we're probably going to have to fight through Gamma and a whole bunch of undead to get to Oscar. What other potions did we have, though? I got flying. I do have the ability to become a gaseous form. And we have a potion of invisibility, do we not? Yeah. And I have a potion of invulnerability, making me invulnerable. No, but <laughs> no, but if I turn, Sebastian, in, if I turn have? into gas, you, you're gas. But you turn invisible and clunk your way through, <laughs> confusing everybody, and you fly. Because do we have a potion of invisibility as well, or you have scrolls? I have, I have a scroll. Yeah. Could we make? What if I just was really loud and obnoxious, like normal? <laughs> like, what if I just I walk in, I'm like, here, Oscar, 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 and I just clang. <laughs> Everything and when he's looking at me, you guys get the jump. I also I do have another idea. Okay, that might work as part <laughs> of this idea. <laughs> I I see where you're going, and I'm gonna make it better. I'm gonna be the fireworks. <laughs> yeah, I have other fireworks. Okay, so do you guys remember this deck of cards that I found? No. Yeah, you don't remember the deck? Yeah, of I do. Cards? Yeah. <laughs> I think I can make some pretty cool stuff happen with this deck of cards. I've been looking at it. It's a deck of cards. Yeah. You gonna play some cards? I'm gonna... I'm gonna, like, throw cards at him. Monty, do I know what the deck of cards is? It is a deck of illusions. It is a deck of illusions. Deck of illusions. So I've been researching this since I found it. Okay. Okay. If I throw a card down, it has to be at random. But an illusion of whatever is pictured on the card Mm -hmm. appears and acts and looks fully realized Mm. I'm thinking there's two sets there's multiple sets of double doors into the library Yeah. how fun would it be to just slide one of these cards under one of the sets of double doors whatever it is appears there oh no an enemy then then Pluto bursts through the other double doors Ignatius and then we gas and fly Although, do we want to go right for Oscar, or should we help Pluto? So, I was thinking go for Oscar before he can get the jump, because he has probably gained a couple tricks from being in this building. And I feel like if we don't get the jump on him right away, he's going to get a few tricks out. Yeah, it's it, might be, be it might nasty. be for the whole, like, uh, sneak sneak and try to get, get the drop on him, because we know where he is. How do we get the drop on him with Gamma and an army of undead between us and him? I have... Magical, like, pass without trace. Um, that room is open. They're going to be looking. Like, when we walk through a door, yeah, they'll be looking. Remember, it's 300 feet from the ba- from the floor of the library to where the breach is, where Oscar Yorn is. So the, the bottom levels of the library are quite a long distance from where Oscar Yorn is. But if Yorn we start is. slinging spells and combating... It, I mean, that's why if we climb up before we kill it. Thunder anything. Wave is audible out to 300 feet, but not necessarily everything that happens. Um, and given the amount of wind and, and like the conditions above, it is possible that the sounds of battle will not quiet, might not be immediately apparent, provided the battle is not protracted. So I almost think if we can burst through, surprise Gemma and the undead, get rid of them. Yeah. Then 
we sneak up to Oscar. This Can we time it where we wait till he's like going to the bathroom or <laughs> like he's like sleeping? Is there a way we can like he's got to be he's got to take a break at one point. You saw him working diligently. Like what if he like goes to take a nap? Like he just rests his eyes and then we burst through. At the same time, he might be so busy working diligently that other than clunk clunk over here, we might be able to get a, a early shot on him. I'm even wondering Thinking about an early shot. Thinking about Pluto, you can teleport two people. Would it I be can. better to teleport from a like attack him from above? Yeah. What if I okay? I can dimension door, and as long as I keep the vision, I can go five hundred feet. So we could go to like above How far his can you nest. Go? Like when we walk in, we could just go like above his nest. Like paratrooper in. The room he was in, was it open above? <laughs> I have a feather fall. So like literally we can fall and it not get open. hurt. Okay. How cool would that be? Okay, guys. I can feather fall us. So we get the drop on Gemma and the minions. I was even thinking skip skip them. <laughs> I don't think there's a way to skip, skip them. We yeah, have skip to go the... through those doors. Oh, okay. Yeah. We're breaking the game. Yeah. We have to go. Plus... You know what? As much as I want to kill Oscar, and we will. Yeah. I also want Gamma <laughs> and his undead dead. I do want dead, to dead? kill Gamma. Undead. Yeah. Dead dead. Um. Okay. So then is the plan to sneakily attack Gamma, not cause a huge commotion, and then we're going to cause a slight commotion, but, but not you... a three hundred foot commotion. But is there no, something no, no, you no, could yeah. do to her? Can you like charm her or like make her like? I'm like, what magic? What do you think I do? am? Some sort of <laughs> spellcaster? Well, yeah. This um, whole time. I have a few ideas. Because if you could lock her down, can I could just run up and <gasps> poke her in the neck. I also have disguised time. self <laughs> as well. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> right there. That's it. Do you think I could disguise myself as like... <laughs> as Gemma? <laughs> if we kill Gemma and the minions... She's like two and a half feet tall. She is a... Uh, uh, yeah, then she's, you transform into Gemma <laughs> and walk on your knees. Yeah, the, the sky self can't change your height that no, much. No, but if you walk on your knees. <laughs> well, I was thinking of being an like one of their undead zombies. Can I change myself that much? I guess I can to only look like an like, undead. Yeah, yeah, an undead, Could and then like come in, and like then they're construct? just like, oh, another one of them, and then. I don't know. I could, I could make us all look like undead. <laughs> what so if, many what options. If, what so many if options. We were all undead. We were all undead. Uh, uh, I can make us all undead. I'm practicing. Oh, because you have it where all of us can do it. Uh, but I can only do it once. Oh, I don't know. This, if it's going to be one, if it's going to be the time that it's going to work. But I don't know if it'll work. This is I the problem. Like, yeah. If Imagine we, the painting just counterspells you. If we, if, we, <laughs> if we attack Oscar first, what I'm worried about is that he will alert others others and then gemma and a swarm of undead are going to come meet us when we're fighting oscar i'd rather take oscar on a, like on his own yeah with or at less least less support less support that makes sense but then we'd have to really like ninja our way in and like be again we don't have to roguish. ninja we need to not be heard 300 feet so away. so no screaming ignatius <laughs> question as we go in. question <laughs> we'll talk about that that's <laughs> sidelining that <laughs> This is important. <laughs> it's important for me to yell Ignatius. Um, <laughs> the the elevators, do they continue up past the library? They do. What if we just took the elevator up? <laughs> like we literally, we just take the elevator up, ding, and then we just walk down and murder Oscar. Start from the top. Work our way down into his larynx. Still, the, again. He... No, the elevators break at the break point as well. Oh yeah, and so where but the breakpoint's right where he is, right? So, and so you may be able to take now the l elevators from what you remember with, with Sebastian's you using one. The one that's functional doesn't go. It the shaft continues, but the elevator itself doesn't serve the top the, those high floors. But there are there is the broken shaft that is crackling with lightning that does go all the way up. We just climb up the murder elevator. 
and we're free and clear. How high are you going to climb? I as high as I need to. Or we could I could teleport mm-hmm. up the shaft up to the very top. Mm. And if I took Veo, she could Wait, 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 wait. What about what about <laughs> You, oh, I wait. can turn into gas. You could turn into gas. Turn into I gas. could take Veo up. Veo could hook shot when we get up there, or feather fall us yeah. down to somewhere safe. Well, that's what I'm thinking. Like, the, get somewhere. The ab- safe elevator would probably take you one or two floors below where Oscar is. Mm. But that still skips. Okay, so now the question is, what do we think is the bigger risk? If we go straight for Oscar, which sounds like we could take the elevator up. <laughs> <laughs> And go for Oscar. <laughs> we just take the just take the elevator I, I, and skip Gamma. But Oscar could still call them for Gamma and the undead, and then we get a whole mess. Yeah, yeah, it's fine though because once we kill him and take the staff of power, then how many undead were there? There was a lot. There were. Uh, Sebastian probably saw at least a dozen ghouls, mm. and then two more of those larger undead constructs that Oscar Yorn had been building. Mm. I still think I can slide a card <laughs> the under the door. The gas thing, is it not the party? Or is it just you? I just It's, it's a just scroll. Him. It's not... It's I can't make all of us gas. Okay. But I think even if, if you were gas and then we... Again, got you teleport us above Oscar and then we like, like feather right fall up the down. Shoot, and then we just... I mean kinda, even past it. Like yeah, up. As far and then high as we can feather fall and like paratroop silently in <laughs> and then just <laughs> land and go you know I'm thinking what can we get where we could potentially just he not know we're there we just in you know and then I can fly if something happens <laughs> and I can hope land that softly <laughs> we I have hope feather fall. Soft. we have literally never succeeded in surprising our enemy <laughs> I know. So I want to try. We're due. We're actually due. We totally. Have, we have time for a number one. This for time. Is gonna, yeah. We have our insight. We know where the people are. It's got to work That's this like time. That's like someone saying, like, you know, my dice never roll crits. Like, it's just due. We're due for a crit. Dice? We're due. Yeah, the old dice games that we used to play. Yeah, oh, yeah true. With uh, the card of illusions. <laughs> <laughs> the card Can of, I still use the, the deck of illusions? Just huck them all. Just throw the whole deck. So. You have all conceptualized several different plans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which one are you going to go with? So card under door, burst in through the other one, take them by surprise. Because Gemma is on the bottom floor, right? She's currently on the bottom floor. She yeah. might be making her way back up. I mean, I call dibs. <laughs> we all call dibs. <laughs> Do you, okay, so vote. What's better? Taking out the infantry first? Yes. Yeah? I, I think so. I think so, too. If we can be... Not huge about it. Yeah, I, I feel like the head of the snake, but guys, I'm with you all the way. Whatever you want to do. Let's burst through those doors and surprise. <laughs> Not burst through. Not burst through. Silently. We'll go, we'll go sneaky. Create yeah. a diversion. Diversion. No, uh, only when they discover us. Because until they know we're here, we have the element of surprise. As if, soon as they discover us, we'll start throwing out the And tricks. that's why, so slide the card under the first door. Commotion's going to start in there, but they will think that that door is where the thing came from. Whatever it is that I pull out of this deck. And we'll be on the other I side. I would say wait till we're in, because then you can throw it at the door, and it'll be like, why is that thing at the door? And we can use it to like walk past them. Because then we're already inside, instead of at the doors. Well, so if there's doors here and here, mm-hmm. we slide under this door, they all go, what's this? And then we go... Yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah. But I was thinking, wait until we go in. Because and then if toss they're just, the card If over? they're just standing far away and they're just looking at the doors, they're going to see us come in. They're already going to notice, though, if we walk through some doors. Yeah, uh, that's true. I think the card is a distraction to draw their attention to away the wrong from the door. door. Yeah. I like the door. I, that's why I like the the shaft. Uh, my vote's for shaft. But the shaft is in you the You said library, you were with right? us. I'm with you, but still no, my vote's for shaft. But I'll side, follow. Oh, I'll yeah. follow your plan. Vail? Mm. I like the distraction, but I think even if there's a distraction on the other door, if we open that door, they're going to see us unless there's something blocking our way to, like, sneak in. Boop, 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 boop. But, I mean, if we're going to go in, we're going to go in. We want to take these guys out. We don't want to have them where they're, like... We don't want to have them where they're all over the place, and then one of them can get away. We want to draw them together and then take them out. So the... The deck of illusion. Maybe we burst through the same door. We throw the card under the door, draw everybody towards that. 
Or just do a Pluto. Oh, go why straight in. Why don't you just huck the goo at her? You still have some of that goo from the oh. mirror. Just huck the goo at her. That'll probably do <laughs> it. No, got, no, it's all been used to consume Stan. Oh. oh. <laughs> no, but I have a few tricks that can work really well with a group of enemies that are gathered around an illusion. You okay. know what I also have too? I have fog cloud. So if we want to create some confusion, I can also do that as well to in order to like have a sneak in. So there's gather them to the door. I can fog cloud it where they can't see and we can sneak. So in. then there's just this illusory monster in this fog cloud. <laughs> throw that, throw that, uh, um, fire elemental. <laughs> thing. Oh. We that- walk in the fire <laughs> elemental door. We throw it at the door. So they go, what's the, cause I, I like to think of something that might convey that it's the mage tower up to no good rather than some outside intruders i want to try to guys whatever we do deck of illusions or anything I could, under the guise of it's the mage tower going crazy because of uh i was saving that for that oscar way they're, but they're, it might be better you're, you're right where their guard is down right now because if we do anything they're going to be like what's up do you have but minor it, illusion yeah i also have minor illusion could we create something with Minor Illusion without using the deck? Or it's not as we random? We can't create a creature. What can we create? Objects. Objects. Oh, or sound. Mm-hmm. I guess I could create sound with your... The illusion will make its own sound. Oh, okay. But we can also add more sound. can add more sound. Okay. So let's create a huge... Disruption. Disruption. Yeah. That draws them all in. Yeah. And then I... Do you want me to fog cloud? And then we fireball them. Oh, okay. Do we have... Yeah, you have fireball, don't you? On a scroll. Oh, no, your ring. <laughs> and, it, and as far as Sebastian knows, he still has it. Oh, okay. Wink. <laughs> what do you think, Pluto? I'm in. Make it, burst through a door, We, we always butts. land on our feet. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. What's the oh, worst so. that could happen? And you just Winging don't, it is kind of We just specialty. need to make not a 300-foot sound. Are you guys Just ready? like a 100-foot sound. <laughs> Are you guys ready to kill some mages? Oh, buddy. are we killing mages? Oh yeah, I guess. Gamma More and like Oscar. Undead. Yeah. Yes, I am. <laughs> Thank you for making that moment truly epic, Veo. Yep. <laughs> I do my job right. <laughs> We're gonna kill some mages. I'm ready. Okay. okay. So tell me what you're going to do. So we're gonna go. In, well, we're gonna. We're gonna go up to one of the doors. Okay. Card under. We're going to slide a card underneath it. Okay. Hope that it's... <laughs> Hope that it creates a distraction. <laughs> okay. That draws them closer to the illusion. Worst okay. Worst worse, we have minor illusion and we can make I sounds. I have a randomized deck of cards here on my computer. Ooh. What, uh, would you like to do it now? Are we, are we doing it? Should the others get ready it. by the other door to go through? You, you two? Yeah. And I slide the card under. And, and then, then you like, run over to the door. I'm going to listen at the door that we're going to walk through, the Same. opposite door. Same. Like me and you, ready. Yeah. So you guys are at like the, was it fire? And then next to it down the hall was air? Earth. 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 It was air, fire, earth. Which mm-hmm. one do you guys want to go through? Um, well, we put the illusion on one and then the furthest one that we can get to, probably earth. From your scouting, was one of the doors, do they lead up that's concealed by make maybe another bookcase? Does it reveal right into the opening or is there kind of like little hallways? Anything that we can put ourselves between, something that puts ourselves between the line of sight of where Gemma might have been. Was there a door that looked like it was better suited to hot conceal our entrance into the room? Um, if someone is up on one of the walkways, the bridges... They're, they will have clear sight to all the doors. Mm. Fair. This might not work. <laughs> you guys ready? Like I said, if we need to fog cloud, uh, what, what's a pork chops? Just say pork chops and I'll fog cloud. Pork Why don't we fog cloud our entrance anyway? Should I fog just cloud for, like, the majesty. illusion or should I just fog no, cloud us? we can't see we can't see the fog cloud. Yeah, either. we need to be able to see. That's why I was f- figuring if we put it somewhere else, it's still more I on I really them. want to get the drop on them. I really want That's to. That's why I'm thinking go from above. Death from above. But again, if we go up, we're going up to Oscar. Yeah. yeah. Messes stuff up. <laughs> Captain, go right for the... Take it. Go for the knees. No, the throat. I keep messing that up. I'm worried that we get piled up on them. Yeah, I'm worried about that too. We gotta fight him anyways. That's why. That's why I thought. Yeah, but he's nasty. Get him. Get. 
get him dirty <laughs> first. It just I, I felt like it skipped a lot of the. Of, it's like uh, it's like it's like getting the cheat codes for the mage tower. Okay, you guys got to make a decision. Yeah, we got to yeah. do it. Let's just do the distraction. Let's do the distraction under the under the door. Yeah, we know it's gonna ha- thing. Hopefully, things are gonna happen. That's all we know. Things are gonna happen. <laughs> We're okay. Just gonna, we're gonna Sebastian, which door are you going to put it under? I go to the fire elemental door. Okay. You're doing it under fire? No. Yep. You draw a card from the deck? I draw a card from the deck. Are, and we're going to go okay. in the other door. Drawing your card. Oh. You got the eight of clubs, oh. which conjures that? an orc. Hey! <laughs> All right. So I pull the card out. And I look at you guys and I'm like, Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Guys, we got this. Are we ready? <clears throat> I'm. I'm gonna try to be quiet. Do we have to fight the orc? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, good. That's a good question, though. That's a good magic question. That is a relevant question, but fortunately, in this case, no. good. I'm glad we don't. So what we're gonna do? I could have drawn a dragon. I won't <laughs> yell. I won't yell Ignatius until. We're fighting something. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but I really want to yell it just so you guys know. Don't yell it. Just so medium it. <laughs> just a whisper. Ignatius. We'll run this okay. Side, right? So no, an orc appears in the room from from the card. And you can hear on the other side as the orc appears this low growl <laughs> from the undead creatures. And you hear Gemma's voice raspily cry out. How did you get in here? You all, looks like you've got fresh meat. Get him. Yes. They're all going to gang up on and the then orc. Run to the. Come. I, I like do a sneaky run, like tiptoe. Okay. And I do a tiptoe run back over to my friends. Alrighty. And then. We open the door. Are we opening the we, door? We wait. I want to okay, listen. So like, I want to listen. It doesn't sound like there's like this horde of undead. You hear footsteps padding towards it and the sound of a cr- uh, hungry cry as the ghouls leap towards the orc. We got to hurry because once they figure it's an illusion. Go. Go. <laughs> okay. You crash through the door. Roll for an issue. Ah! <laughs> Do we get surprise? Oh. Let's find out. 26. Wow, wow, wow. Oh, I thought you could just two. No. Okay, Sebastian, yeah. I'm going to have you make a deception check with advantage. Beautiful. Use those dice from earlier. <laughs> they owe you. They, they owe they, you. They do owe me. Deception with advantage. Oh, buddy. Oh, my God. Oh my, God. my dice tonight <laughs> are haunting you. That's uh, the second three one. You've rolled two threes and two ones. I this. get a 12 on my deception. They just don't like you. That's good. It's fine. It's pretty good for what you rolled. Yeah. <laughs> I have a really high deception. Alrighty. Is it? So, so good actually, mine's not bad. So here's what you got. Um, Sebastian, what did you get? For initiative. 14. 14. Veo? 26. Okay. Pluto? Uh, 19. 19. Okay. All right. <sighs> Sebastian, you got a 14, you said? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, I will get our adversaries. Already. Okay. Uh oh. So. You can hear the rustling of rustling. miniatures being <laughs> 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 hundreds of undead as they be brought from Monty's hands to the to the table. Oh, what? What are you? (laughs) 
It looks like what? Looks like pickle Rick. <laughs> oh, those things look awful. Well, what's he doing over there? <laughs> <laughs> Surprise! Oh, he's looking right at us. Uh oh. <laughs> I need I need the three dimensional. Okay, so. Thinking three dimensions now. As you crash open the doors, you see the group of ghouls leaping off of the bookshelves and bounding towards the orc. As they do so, you can see one of these massive, hulking, undead creatures that Oscar Yorin has built with a patchwork of machinery, tanks, and flesh standing underneath the archway of the doorway and another up on the bridge with Gemma. Gemma is there at the top of the bridge, pointing down towards the illusion of the orc, but as the other door bounds open, she quickly snaps her gaze over. The ghouls and the constructs are surprised, but Gemma is not. <gasps> Gemma got us. First to act is Veo. Okay. Um, so all of everybody but Gemma. Yeah. We get... Head Gemma. Okay. <laughs> like, Gemma. You know what? I'm going for Gemma. I'm going to... Um... As me and her lock eyes, I'm like, shoot her! <laughs> <laughs> Clever girl. <laughs> um, I am going to... Uh, this. Zephyr strike and aim it at Gemma. I'm gonna take three three shots on my first go. Okay. With my longbow. Great. You fire the shots towards her. Uh, nineteen. It's a nineteen. As the shots ring towards her, she casts shield oh. and deflects the first shot. All right. All shield right, doesn't go right. that high. Uh, seventeen. It, the, the magical oh, the energy of the shield is still holding and okay. blocks it. Well, I aim at the guy beside her then for my okay. third. Set. Oh, 19. That is a hit. Nice. Um, gather all my dice. Thirty-one damage Whoa, to the guy beside is. Gemma. Okay. The shot crashes through one of the hoses on the on the t- attaching this tank on its back to its face, and the spray of <laughs> of necrotic fluids fly everywhere. That's and it's heavily damaged. Anything else, Veo? These ladders on the side near us. Do they go all the way up, or there is a crisscrossing network of ladders that connect up the bookshelves. You could absolutely climb the bookshelves. I'm going for it. Uh, <laughs> use my feline agility to get to the bookshelves. Okay. Um, Which where? Over here? Yeah. And then up. Um, how many feet would you say that is? I want to get behind the, ta- the table and like crouch down. <laughs> yes. Okay. That's where I'm at. Sounds good. Oh, we gotta murder Gemma. Can you get me up there? <laughs> it yes. is uh, Gemma's turn. Uh, however, um, and she. Sorry. No. Sorry. Anything going on? Okay. No. I'm. I'm very. I'm trying to think. There's don't a lot happening. I'm don't nervous. worry. Don't worry. You got this. You got this. Okay. Um, Gemma. Looks uh, looks down uh, at the two of you and looks over uh, at Veo and, and kind of surveys the situation uh, between herself. Um, and she is going to point over at Veo and cast Blight. Veo! <laughs> Veo, no! Uh, so she uh, she moves over towards you on the bridge. So she comes forward. And she says, you're not going to get that close that quickly. And necrotic energy washes out from her fingers towards you, Veo. Mm-hmm. And you need to make a constitution saving throw. Five. Five. That is a failure, I'm afraid. Oh, no. You're going to take 8d8 necrotic damage. Oh, no. 
So that's going to be... Uh, Mayo! Um, ooh, not a very good point, actually. Uh, 17. Oh, there we go. It's going to be 30 points of necrotic damage. As she reaches out towards you, um, and this necrotic power, gra- like the tendrils of, of it reach out towards you, and you feel like life energy being pulled out of your body. I feel aged! <laughs> Are you still as hungry as you were in your youth? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> I to feel more so, hungry now. Some things never change. Oh, God! <laughs> okay. <clears throat> okay, I'm good. Next up is Pluto. <laughs> um, how, how high up is the first uh, cross? 30 feet up. Can I run and oh, can I dash up it? Can you dash up the because you said it's like a crisscross of like ladders and stuff? Yeah, no, because you don't have a climb speed. You it costs you twice as much movement to go up them. So if I dashed, could I make it up? Uh, well, you're about ten feet away from the nearest one. So if you dash, you would need you would need to clear eighty feet of movement to get up. Could I jump? The start of it. Uh, that doesn't give you any additional speed, though. That oh, still limits bummer. you to the maximum speed. <sighs> Although, if, if you bounded and jumped and leapt up, oh, you want to like go off like a cool di- table or something? Uh, off a table on the and diagonal up to save. Okay, sure. If you give me an athletics check, you bound off the table to climb up to spare yourself the first little bit of the climb. Uh, yeah. Twenty. Uh, 23. Okay, you run up the table and bound up, and you make it 15 feet up. So I'm going to say that you, if you now dash and spend the rest of the turn, you're able to climb all the way up and get right, right to them. I'm the doing point. it, and okay. then I'm going to action surge, and then I'm just going to Ignatius, and then oh just start What have I allowed? <laughs> <laughs> and now... And you're up against Gamma. Okay. Hi, Gamma. And, um... Don't forget yeah. Mage Slayer. Uh... I miss. <laughs> it's epic, but I miss. Okay. I, well, I get a one. <laughs> All right. That is an epic miss. But so I, I lose my footing on the first one. I swing and like as I'm coming up, I trip on like the last bit and it like lands right beside her. But then I swing and I get a big old um, like 26 to hit. <laughs> A 26, that is definitely Does she hit. accept she, my 26? She cannot shield that one. <laughs> Ignatius she, crashes down on this poor little gnome. <laughs> poor, poor little <laughs> um, 11 regular that. damage, 10 fire damage, okay. and I want her to make a... No, nah, just she's going to take it, and then I'm going to stand right beside her. Okay, looks good to me. Next up are the ghouls who are surprised. Who are surprised and do not get to act. So Sebastian, it's over to you. Um, all right. So they both went up. I'm going to hold out my mother's ring, mm-hmm. and it starts glowing with energy as a little bead shoots out of it and lands in the middle <laughs> of all these ghouls. <laughs> Fireball. Boom! And they all have to make dexterity saving throws. Yes. Fireball. One succeeds, but that's it. <laughs> <laughs> do you need dice? What do you uh, need? Three, four, five, six. I'll need two more. The blossoming flame crashes into the ghouls, and and um, as the as the flames reach out, you can see that for a brief moment the bookshelves flicker. And this barrier forms across the shelves. Oh, that so stops smart! The yeah. That's so smart yeah. that they did that. <laughs> I'm going to use one sorcery point to re-roll. How many can I re-roll up to my charisma? Up to your charisma mod. modifier. <laughs> re-roll. All greedy, those. greedy, oh, greedy. Right. Yeah, this is slightly mm-hmm. better. Slightly. Uh, all right. Counting dice. Mental math. The ultimate. 31 challenge. damage. They nice. are incinerated. Yeah. Even the one that saved? The one that saves survives. And the uh, 
the one reading table is also completely destroyed by that as well. <laughs> so, <laughs> didn't have the same fail safes yeah, as the book. Didn't have the same. The books are yeah, far the more illusion. Is the Tables illu- are replaced. Is the illusion still there? <laughs> is the illusion still there? No, the illusion is fried to a uh. <laughs> <laughs> The illusory orc screams, No! I'd just been born. <laughs> <laughs> is this real life? But you then you, really you see me go, realize it's a library. <laughs> yeah. And then I, I run that. and I dive behind the rubble here. Cool. And the constructs are surprised as well, so they do not get to act this round. So we go back to the top with Veo. <laughs> um, I'm going to shoot at the construct behind Pluto. And okay. this time I'm going to use my hand crossbow. Nope. <laughs> Big old nope. Uh, Wincing in pain as the necrotic energy still racks us through your body. 20. As you pull out your crossbow, the the first shot goes completely wide, but the second shot lands. And, oh, sneak attack? Sneak attack. Oh, yeah, take your dice. Very nice. 25. 25 damage. <laughs> Bam. Okay. And then uh, my bonus action, I'm going to use crossbow expert. So that third shot. Oh, sorry. No, I don't get that. Let me roll Hold on. Nope. 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 That's two Ooh, ones. Ooh, Veo shooting wide. No, no, no. The blight. The blight. <sighs> oh, it's fine. Not looking good. Not and then I duck, good. dug down behind the table. Ooh. Okay. Oh. Oh. Hi, Gamma. Oh, no. Um, Gemma sees uh, Pluto right up behind her, and she is going to try to cast Misty Step. Excuse you? <laughs> I think it goes off. There's Does not Mage much Slayer I can do. allow you to? Yeah. No. No, it's all unless it says like counterspell. Counterspell is like it interrupts. But I swing. I get to swing my sword after yeah, she teleports. So you, as long as she teleports, you do get to uh, use your reaction. No, she. You can do it because. Can I swing at her? Yeah, you get the swing at her. Yeah. As she's like verbally or like, as she's trying to cast a spell, you get. A Is swing. it concentration, Misty? Step? No. No. Oh, okay. I get a twenty. No wait. Yeah, twenty-one to hit. That does hit. Um damage for 13 regular damage and four fire damage okay she is very bloodied and mm-hmm. extremely wounded can you shield bash her off um and she <laughs> pops over on the other side of the construct and then casts toll the dead on veo no Veo make a wisdom saving throw veo no oh, god, oh, god. oh you have advantage on wisdom saving throws too because of your hero's feast do i yeah <laughs> Good thing, because uh, 19. That is a saving throw. You do not take that- 2d12 necrotic. <laughs> oh, good, good, good. <laughs> Ooh. Good, good. Uh, Gemma grits her teeth, and then she runs down the bridge uh, thirty feet, uh, 25 feet. Get back here. Oh. Excuse you. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, Pluto, you are up. Um, I'm going to try to... M- Am I am I within thirty, Sebastian? No. Okay, I'm gonna this this construct's looking pretty hurt, right? It is extremely damaged. Oh, Those buddy. two shots have really wounded it. Uh, does an eighteen hit? It does. So I take Ing- Ignatius down on it for sixteen regular damage and seven fire damage. You cleave it in twain, and it crashes off the bridge and lands, crashing through the bookshelves, sending books flying everywhere. And then just there's this loud, meaty thwack as it goes <laughs> on the ground, <laughs> and just like guts pour out of it everywhere. I'm going to yuck, swing Ignatius down it, w- with the same stroke and stab it into the ground, and then reach on my back and just huck my javelin right at at Gemma. Get her. Nice. And I'm going for it. Use Get out of here. Uh, 22 to hit. That is a hit. And she can't <laughs> block that with shield. Oh, pardon. Sorry. 19 to hit. She can block that with Tw- shield. Oh, wait. No, wait. What's, what did I say? 22, 21, 20. Because it's not the plus two. So it's 20 to Okay. Hit. Then she cannot save herself with shield. <laughs> <laughs> she can't what, a to roller coaster. <laughs> what a roller coaster. What a roller coaster of emotions. Okay. <laughs> it's because of the plus two from Ignatius. Yeah. yeah. So it was a 11 plus nine. So 20 to hit. Okay. I wreck her. Going in. Get her. And uh, 
I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna cast the thing. The uh, the, the, lightning. the lightning. Okay. The javelin. So she's gonna take. Um, she fails the saving throw <laughs> miserably. Sixteen lightning damage and uh, four. Uh, and 11 regular damage. So you throw, you you cleave down <laughs> the creature, drop Ignatius into, into the bridge and throw the javelin at her. And she reaches her hand up to block it with a shield. And the javelin goes right between, like shatters the shield. The arcane energy breaks and it goes right between her hands and the javelin hits her in the throat. And then all the electrical energy <laughs> for the pours, throat. Through her, <laughs> pours through her body and she spasms and falls forward onto the javelin, which which then is, it's very gory. And as she's spreading out blood, I look, I turn to, to Sebastian with a big smile on my face and I'm like, I did it. I got her in the throat. The throat. You, it was so cool. Did you yeah. see her head? Like, oh man, that was neat. <laughs> and I'm really proud of myself in this moment. Like, you, there's a super hear, like, like from way below. You hear like a. Woo. <laughs> you see me kind of pop up on the table, and I'm like, cool. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just really proud of myself right now. Okay, the last ghoul runs as quickly as it can towards Sebastian, but I think that's its entire turn because it needs to d- dash to get to you. Seeing it was denied its meal, it goes to eat Sebastian. <laughs> <laughs> but it cannot attack, and it is Sebastian's turn. Um, Crowley flies into the ghoul's face, and I'm just going to firebolt it with super advantage. Okay, but that's negated because he's up to, up to you and you have disadvantage. Fine. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, no super advantage, just regular yes. <laughs> Oh Come on, dice. <laughs> Is that like how many natural ones have we had? Tonight? I've I've like, rolled four natural ones tonight. Jill has two. rolled two, two. Yeah, <sighs> my dice just keep on giving. <laughs> oh man, this is this is not bode well for you guys. It's oh, fine, we're good. I'm it's fine. It's saving fine. it all for Oscar. <laughs> yeah, it, we're due. Get, getting the ones out now against the ghouls. Okay. <laughs> Gonna do nothing but just saving shows. Shake them out. Get them out. Get them out. Uh, get them so out. that I'm. Mm, that's my. That's my turn. Okay. The construct runs up to Sebastian oh, and smashes no. him in the face with its big, meaty fist. Oh, uh, you're fine, though, Sebastian. Uh, I'm getting like a physical. 25 to hit. Oh, <laughs> no. Uh, for 18 points of bludgeoning damage. Uh, yep. <laughs> As Ow. it rushes up to you, and the ghouls just, like, right beside you, and you step backwards, and it just comes around and punches you in the chest. Oh. <sighs> I'm winded. I'm winded. And you go to the top of the round with Veo. Uh, I come over the table to the edge, and I take uh, my three shots at Ooh. the big guy. Sniper with the position. Crossbow. Uh, seventeen. That is a hit. And he, he's based. Yeah. 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 <gasps> Sneak attack. <laughs> I'll come get you. 23 damage. I'm coming, I'm coming. With that one. First shot. Mm, 13. That is a hit. Ooh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was These the things greatest. are not hard to hit. Woo! <laughs> Eight, 18 <laughs> damage. Okay. Did someone clip that. <laughs> someone clip that sound that just came out. 15. Also a hit. <laughs> 20 damage. So it is heavily damaged. It is leaking fluids as, as the hoses and pipes and tanks on its body are broken and parts of its limbs are damaged and shot as you fire down upon it from above, but it still continues forward relentlessly. Get him, Pluto! <laughs> uh, we now go to Gemma, who is very dead. Uh, and Pluto! Uh, I calmly pick up Ignatius. I whisper... I'm sorry I let you down. <laughs> I'm sorry I put you down on the ground for a moment. Just know that it's just because you, I can't throw you. And I calmly walk off Never the edge. Never let me down again. <laughs> I calmly walk off the edge of the build and I and I just, I calmly like, just time the, the arc of my fall. So I'm going to land right on the construct. I'm just going to drive okay. my blade. Make an athletics check. Right down Woo! the spine. You calmly just like. I just take uh, the one step. Uh, I get a 
26. Nice. Okay. You are still going to take five points of bludgeoning damage, and Except. you'll land prone at the after your first attack. Worth it. <laughs> <laughs> the look cool factor is just too high right now. Uh, 25 to hit. That is a hit. For 17 regular damage Whoa. and seven fire damage. Uh, you leap down, <laughs> bring Ignatius across the construct's back, ripping open its spine, and you and Can I land it, like, in a crumble on yeah. it? Like, yeah, into the table and yeah. everything? Like, yeah, the go- table <laughs> crunches. Yeah. I yeah. just see this body fall <laughs> under it, and then I stand up, and uh, and then I'm gonna swing at the ghoul. <laughs> stand up, brush yourself off. <laughs> I get a, tw- a 18 to hit. Also hit uh, for <laughs> 11 regular damage and eight fire damage. And you cut the ghoul down as well. <laughs> you hear a golf clap from and the top. Like, and there's like pieces of table like stuck in my armor <laughs> that I'm slowly just kind of pulling out, like. I stand up like bruised all over and I'm like I I'm pretty sure I had that covered uh thank you. Thank yeah, you. I know I was just kind of cleaning up. Man, that was so cool. You just you just jumped up. And then the I bridge. hold out my hand and my spear returns to me. My javelin nice. and it comes back. Could you I... look any cooler right now? <laughs> I want to look Jackson? super cool right now. And I just I just put on my hand as I'm looking at you and it just returns to me and then I just attach it to my back. All of a sudden you see little heart eyes. I'm just like, what? I'll always be there for you. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> As this is happening, I'm like sliding down the ladder and like gulping down like a greater healing potion, be like, so that was fun. <laughs> and that is where we'll take a break. Oh. And we are back. We have finished our short rest and we are ready to play some more DD. Yum, yum, yum. But before we get started, I want to give a shout out to Tabletop Audio. Uh, you'll be listening to them now. And ever since we started our live stream, check it out, tabletopaudio.com. They have lots of great ambient music to elevate your in-home games. So check it out. It's all free. Be sure to visit our merch store at the links below, our Teespring store for all your favorite Dungeon Dudes t-shirts. Uh, or you can visit the link bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. If you're enjoying the stream and you'd like to support our work, check us out on Patreon. You can find it by following the links below or at patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes. And if you join our Patreon, we also have an amazing Discord community where you can chat with all of us about all of the nerdy things to do with D&D, Drakenheim, and talking to us just about, I don't know, what video games you like and if you're watching. How many dogs you have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How many dogs, how many cats, whether you like dogs or cats more, it's all up to you. lizard person. Come hang out with us on Discord. This week's episode of Dungeons of Drakenheim has been sponsored by our great friends at Dimension 20. We're spreading the news that Brennan Lee Mulligan and a team of veteran college humor comedians are back for season three of their D&D live play series, The Unsleeping City. It is really worth checking out. It is a hilarious live sp- stream show, uh, a hilarious live play show from a very talented cast of creators at College Humor. And you can watch the full series and more by subscribing at dropout.tv and even get 50% off your first month using the code ROLL50. Follow the links in the description below for more information. With that, let's return to the ruins. The library has become a scene of brief carnage (laughs) and amazing feats of athleticism as you have slain Oscar Yoren's apprentice, Gemma, who has survived through... (laughs) All from episode two. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Took us really long enough. You, really makes you really think. makes you think. <laughs> and now gurgling dead with the javelin of lightning in her throat at the top of the bridge here. Um, the halls, the howling wind of the halls above, and the crackling energy of the breach in the tower resounds overhead as the flocks of wayward books fly and flitter through the air all through the library seems like the books might be uh, some of the books that were knocked out during the fight pick themselves up and some of them like one just floats back into place another sprouts some legs and climbs back onto its place in the shelf Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, as you begin to pick some things up the scorch marks from the earlier fireball one of those brooms comes from upstairs and begins sweeping away (laughs) <laughs> Sebastian sees the broom go by and the is just fear. like, oh my god. Oh. All right, I'm it's eyeing not, it. It's like, not attacking me. It should have brought me food. Um, on, uh, on Gamma's person, you do find 
Yes. More scrolls. Loot. Uh, three potions of greater healing. <gasps> oh, I just, I pick one off of her body and drink it. <laughs> That's 20? Yeah. I needed that. I put one back in my bag because I already drank one of my bags. Um, I'm going to put one on. Two. How are yeah, you doing? She also I'm, I'm okay had now. the hand and the head and the rod of the librarian. Uh, I pull the head out. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Anything significant? He's very dead. Uh, emaciated, even. With a stern-looking face of what you can discern of the face. Um, it, uh... There are... There's not much left of him at all. But the hand. I, I toss the, the hand yeah, and I'm the like, head. Eh. And then I pull the hand out. The hand? Um, she's got both the hands. Which she's bound, she bound them together because there were six rings. So one hand with five rings and one hand with a single ring on it as well. I pop those in my bag. <laughs> Keep the head then too. No, no, no. no. But it sounds it like they're, they're a pair. Or a, a well, the hands triplet. are a pair. <laughs> it's a pair. The head is the... Um, what if we need them to get into another room? Listen, there's so many times that we've needed a helping hand, but it's never mm-hmm. really helped us get ahead. Yeah. There's also the rod. <laughs> so um <laughs> There is also the the uh, the rod that she took from the librarian as well. I, I pull the rod out. It is it resonates with magic, and it is covered in strange runes uh, of of an alien language. And looking uh, looking it over, there is is a strange kind of magical power here uh, contained within. It feels like the magic energy is almost like a conduit to, in the in the same way that you would use a wand or a staff to be the conduit from your power for your own arcane power. This rod is like that, but the conduit the the polarity of the arcane energy is reversed, as if it is meant to pull the arcane energy in to the person wielding it and not out. I slip it into my pocket. I'm going to see how that goes. <laughs> pocket. Is that a rod in your pocket? Yes. Nice. Thanks. Um, I don't think we have ten minutes right now, but I could read the writing on this rod if I had time to cast a ritual. But I think we should probably keep going. Yeah. I think we can get it afterwards. It might have something to do with that doorway you <laughs> saw way, way up. Yeah. It might well, help us. We want to try to get the drop on Oscar. Yeah, we can get it. A literal drop. <laughs> Did it, Gemma have anything else on her? Like in, like in terms of rings or like... Uh, she was not wearing any rings. Um, she uh, also does have on her person um, several... Uh, three syringes of Aqua Expergo huh. and a uh, potion of Aqua Delirium as well. I, I take all of those. <laughs> so you're going to yeah. hang on to those for us? Yeah. You got she that. had like a bandolier of these vials uh, around her. Um, and uh, so that's that's everything that she was carrying. How many Aqua Delirium? Just one? Three. One and oh, three Aqua Expergo. Cool. Oh, nope. Add math. Yeah. There. Beyond that, uh, the, the bag that she was carrying had several other... Um, there were several other tomes and books inside of it of various arcane nature. Several of them are spell books containing spells of the necromancy school and others of the conjuration school. Um, just looking o- like just at a quick glance, it's t- you can't tell what spells they are aside from the school. Um, and other other spells related to uh, the crafting and binding of magic items and elementals. Okay. I. Uh... I'm going to actually pop those books into my bag as well. Okay. They, they were up to something with the heads and the and the hands and the sewing. Like, I think that he's trying to rebuild the mages. Yeah. And try to have them run the show. I don't know how effective it would be, but if he's got the staff of power, or at least the, the archmage staff, that could be sc- scary. Because mm-hmm. even if he can half do it, and has like undead mages running around the hallways. That's not good. No. 
Which is exactly why we're going to kill him. So. Veo. Yeah. How do you want to go about this? You're the uh, stealth captain. So above him, it's open, correct? Yeah. So I'm thinking if... If we can... You said you have a gaseous form. Yeah. You can creep up, right? Does gaseous form let you go up? Yeah, I can I can fly. Uh, would I know? So all I know, all I have is this scroll. But would I know from being magic? <laughs> that, uh, is, is gaseous yeah, form? Yeah, you can study the scroll and understand what the for, what what it will do. Um, the the potion will transform you. Um, or a willing creature that you touch, as well as everything it's wearing and carrying, into a misty cloud. So it lasts for one hour as long as you concentrate on it, and you gain a flying speed of 10 feet. You have resistance to non-magical damage and advantage on strength, dexterity, and constitution saving throws. You can pass through small holes, narrow openings, and even mere cracks, though you treat liquids as if they're solid surfaces. You can't fall and you remain hovering in the air. Well, in the form of a misty cloud, you can't talk or manipulate objects, and any objects you're wearing or holding uh, can't be dropped or otherwise interacted with. You can't attack or cast spells either. Okay, so I can do that, and I can get into the room with him. Yeah, you can, and again, because it is a scroll, you can use the spell on yourself or someone else. Yeah. So what I'm thinking is, Pluto, if you can uh, dimension door us as far, well... Maybe not as far as you can, but I'd even say a hundred feet above, right? And we feather fall. You essentially can drop right in, and there's debris above, correct? There, there is debris and floating chunks of rock. Okay. From where we are, can I like look up and be like, Oscar's just like over there, like way up? Yes, he is straight up on the other side of the tower. So like we could dimension door and be like dimension door above that area and drop in um you can certainly try okay so what i'm thinking is if we can feather fall if you want to try to get down to the room where oscar is i can almost stay up in the debris i can take a get further down but take a potion of flying and stay up in the debris and take shots and hide between Mm -hmm. stuff Uh, it's pretty magic up there so don't go into like the debris too far like where the break in the wall is because mm. there's like magic shooting all around that mm. it's, it's like yeah you might okay. get messed up but I, I like where you're going with that I'm just giving you the cautious yeah it's pretty magical up there okay mm-hmm. not too far so how far would you say up would be that section well see where the electricity is like going between all the rocks yeah. you want to be under that okay from from what you recall so the the entire field in the midst is filled with bits of the tower Mm -hmm. chunks of the meteor and pieces of delirium Mm. and the whole thing has resulted in a crackling corona of arcane energy that the area along the base of the tower along the tops of the towers are sensibly safe enough for oscar yorn up there Mm -hmm. but like there's raw delirium up there and the haze and mist as well as the crackling energy Mm. um there was a enough room for the ladder to go up and but when kelly was floating around as the arcane eye he didn't go into that space he used the say he used the the ladder ladder up um so what could happen if you go in there Mm -hmm. um could be dangerous in addition um there is all of the 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 influence of the delirium and the haze because it is outside True. as well now so that that should be something that is in your mind where's the ladder uh the ladder is near oscar where oscar you on a set of workshop and it just goes up from him yeah right i'm also a little concerned if i can defer to my magic people <laughs> um what's going to happen if we dimensioned her up there and there's like chaos energy what if it like screws up our dimension door yeah or what if it like throws us outside of the tower yeah true yeah i didn't think of that or shuts it down like maybe maybe finding a way that's maybe less then teleporty we, maybe then we just get up to this level and sneak across 
as much as we can. Maybe, yeah, if we move closer, I also have a scroll of invisibility, greater invisibility. That would be great for uh, Veil. Yeah. What are you going to do, clunk clunk? (sighs) I'm going to do what I do. (laughs) I'm going to do what I do best, and that's kill mages. And I want him to look into my eyes as I murder him. But I want him to look into my eyes while I murder him. Well, let's make him. Let's make his eyes face two different ways then, while <laughs> we murder him. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, as I said before, it's a couple hundred feet to climb up. Not impossible, but certainly a difficult climb up the bookshelves. Um, there is a spiral staircase that connects to the the room as well that you could take up. All. Um, and there's all the bridges and everything that go along through. Floating books wise, when does that start? They're just flitting around, just being flying books. And can uh, can I fly? Like I try to flutter with them? Like is the is you the can gravity? You flap your arms and yeah. try to fly, but yeah. you don't. Oh, I'm still too heavy. You need heavy. a potion for that. I'm still too what heavy. If you grab a book, will it fly? I with? grab books. I grab the biggest book I can. Um, when you touch the book, it just gently rests in your hands and let you read it. Aww. I can't read. Stupid <laughs> book. <laughs> I fuck it. <laughs> and uh, as you throw it, it just writes itself and flutters off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so do we go Magic from the top? Cool. Or is that too dangerous? I think it's too dangerous so thinking we have about to, all the crap that's up there. So we have to go up from here. Do we still want... I can make somebody invisible. Yeah. I can make somebody gas. Yeah. I think you should throw the more cards. Because that worked. Deadly. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have anything like silence or something? I have pass without trace. Which works but that right? gives us extra 10 to moving, but it doesn't make us invisible. So I was going to say something to stop him from casting spells would be great. Oh, I yeah. have a few ideas. <laughs> it's called murdering him. <laughs> Just murder him. Uh, well, if we make our way up the staircase, that'll help. And then we take the books, the bookcases for the rest of the way. Like, like we war- we go up like 50 f- How He's about 100 feet above us? or uh, Several, about 300. So we can go up like <laughs> 200 feet on the staircase. Oh my god. We're climbing like 20 stories on a bookcase? Oh no, on the staircase? Yeah. Okay, that's good. It's a stairmaster. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready for I'm that? I'm all winded. No, I'm, I'll be fine. Uh, I don't know about you guys. I got a good constitution. Uh, I can fly. I can fly. I can fly. I can fly. I have a potion that does that, so I'm probably just gonna fly. Yeah, I have it for an hour, so. Okay, do it. I like that. Do you, am I gonna gas? As and I'm gonna as- walk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, do you want to stay with Pluto or boom, no? Boom, boom, or do boom, you want to make him boom, gaseous boom. and you uh, invisible? Hmm. The vis- invisibility. Do you have a scroll of invisibility or a potion of invisibility? Because remember, after you cast yeah. the scroll, you still need to concentrate on it. So the the other thing too is that uh, the invisibility only lasts for like a minute. So lasts I would for say one that. hour. Oh, the, the potion. Invisibility? Yeah. Because yeah. I think one of us got a potion of invisibility, and one of us got flying, and then you got invulnerability, yeah, I a, right? I have a potion of invisibility and a scroll of greater invisibility. Oh. Yeah. Greater would let me cast spells while remaining invisible. Oh. So you could give him the potion of invisibility and you do the scroll on yourself. Sure. Yeah. And then you could cast spells on being invisible. <laughs> I feel like that's... But a- then he can't see me when I murder him. That's only... Yeah, I know. But or, you can... Or you take the... Uh, sorry, scroll of gaseous form, right? Yeah. Is that... And that concentrates. Oh, okay. That doesn't work. It works. Well, if he's going to be gaseous and then you take a, a regular potion of invisibility... Because you have a scroll of greater, right? right? But you can't do two scrolls. You don't have Time to, to cast decide. Spells. Yeah, we don't have to overthink it. Uh, you know, we. I think we have a good plan. Walk up there, murder Oscar, collect reward. I'm just going to walk with Pluto until we're closer. All right, I'm going to fly. <laughs> she can fly, okay. she can fly, she can fly. So Veo drinks the potion of flying and cool, begins cool, cool, cool. hovering up the tower. Will the two of you begin walking up the stairs? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay, the climb. All right, you begin your way climbing up the stairs. Uh, as you all do that, do so. Um, I will get you to all roll me a perception check. Oh, hey, good roll. 
I got a 19. 11. 11? Yeah. Uh, 24. Okay. As you are about 200 feet up the stairs, about two-thirds of the way up, Pluto and Sebastian, you spy it. There is a ghoul watching over the ledge about 100 feet away, and it sees you, and it turns to bolt. <laughs> is it like, okay, where it is, is it you, away from Oscar's platform or is it like... It would be bol- bolting in the direction. It, so where the where the break is, where the library ends and the broken part begins, it's looking over the ledge and it sees you and it turns, it growls lowly and it, it goes to bolt. What is it standing on? It is standing on the broken edge of the tower. Would you say it's a little rubbly? Yeah. What do you want to do? Mold earth to collapse the ground on the ledge so that he falls. Okay. Um, I will do... Uh, you can do an opposed spellcasting ability check against his dex... Uh, and, or what's your spell save, DC? 17. Okay. Are you going to roll against that? Make a dexter- He's going to make a dexterity <clears throat> saving throw. Okay. He gets a natural one. <gasps> and he falls. So I see him turn and I just go, <clears throat> and the ground... And the masonry, uh, the masonry collapses, and as he turns, he howls out and sc- cries out. And Hide. falls all the way down. With a throw crash. a card. Throw a card somewhere. No, he just fell naturally. Hide. Okay, hide. Duck behind. Is there something to duck behind? Or like- um, you would need to dive off the staircase towards one of the reading the reading nooks. I dive into the nearest nook. Okay, make a stealth check. Yep, dive in. Yeah, what are you going to do? Um, Against the wall itself, where I'm kind of floating Ooh. up, there are crevices <laughs> that I can hide against. Yeah, there's I'm, some bookshelves that you could hide in. Hide in a bookshelf? Okay, yeah. Make a stealth check. What you got? Six. Eighteen. Nineteen. Okay. <laughs> As you dive for cover, you see another ghoul look up where the ledge fell down. It looks at the ledge, looks down at the ghoul, and as it looks down at where the the ghoul has fallen all the way down, it sees... What'd you get? Six. Uh, I think 18. 19. It sees all three of you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, and it, it's it's just the, with these the the sharp senses of a predator. It looks down at the fallen ghoul and sees Veo as she dives in, in and... It, it essentially, as it comes up, it catches sight of all three of you as you do- dive towards your hide- uh, hiding spots. <laughs> um, I, and, I try to crumble okay. it even further. You can make it. We're going to roll for initiative to see if you can react that that quickly. Oh man, I got a natural twenty. I got a natural one. Okay, so the ghoul sees the three the, the three of you. You turn to mold earth, and it turns and it bolts back. Can I throw a javelin at it? It's. God. If you beat its initiative of 20. Uh, sorry, 22 specifically, because of its deck. I can't. got an initiative of... I can't. Uh, 21. Damn. Yeah, it's got a 22 with a natural 20. Stop it. So we gotta run. We have to hurry. Okay. <laughs> and how many feet down are we? We're still 100 feet away from roughly where... Oscar is. Yep. Hmm. Pluto, just teleport up there. <laughs> Pluto? Where are we going? Disneyland? Where are you pointing? <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not doing it. Uh, I just... It, are we just going to go for his ledge? I don't know, man. All right. I'm out of ideas. <laughs> it's go time. We have to beat the ghoul to surprise Oscar. I, I try to remember the plan of uh of the minor illusion where you showed us where everything is and i'm like i am one with you and i grab your temple (laughs) i grab your temple Uh, (laughs) uh, uh. (laughs) and i dimension door as close to oscar yorin as i can oh my god (laughs) (laughs) and (laughs) And, <laughs> and I try to make it look magic-y, but I really don't know what I'm doing. Okay. <laughs> Just holding your head. 
Alrighty. So, what did you guys get for initiative specifically? I haven't rolled oh, it. Twenty-one. Twenty-one for Vale. Is that the initiative we're using? Yeah, because you guys have decided to go fo- go forward with this. What, twenty. You got a twenty. Okay. Three. Three. Okay. <laughs> there it is, guys. There it is. Okay, so Sebastian's got a three, so he's going dead last. <laughs> I was not expecting to be grabbed by the temple. It threw off my whole game. <laughs> I could have just done this, too. Bale, what did you get against me? 21. 21? Okay. Oh, wow. Oh, man. Okay, this is... Sorry, Sebastian. <laughs> it's not hard to beat a three. <laughs> I'm not upset. I uh, This is my okay, life. We should... Someone be at home. So Sebastian's Please count dead last. How many uh, uh, ones constructs. have been rolled tonight? And then, Pluto, you said you got a twenty. Uh, twenty. Okay, so let's roll off because Oscar tied you. Oh, you probably got this. One. Eighteen. Yeah, you do. On the dice. Okay, so. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Top of the round. Oh, what? <laughs> yeah, because the ghouls got. They're doing great. They're doing good. Okay. So, and Vale, you're 100 feet down Mm -hmm. still. (laughs) Okay. So, here's where we're at. I I hope you can get up there quickly. (laughs) Where did we teleport to? You said right by as close as you can get. As I, I, I grabbed your temple Don't take my and I tried to envision <laughs> everything that you saw and everything you told me and I tried to go right beside where Oscar Joran was sewing things holding up a staff. I don't know if you want to just hold off on me for now because I'm still at the book. Case. And I embraced you with your mother's cloak so it really felt at home <laughs> oh, when man. I did it. This is a good idea. Yeah, this is warm. This, this is, is a great warm. idea. So you have, att- you have attempted to teleport to a space that you cannot see while in the environments of the Amethyst Academy. Oh my god. Make an intellig- both of you can make an intelligent saving throw. Oh. Uh-oh. That's not a good one. 11. 11? 16. Okay. Sebastian, um, you succeed. Oh god. Pluto, no. I need you to roll me a D percentile, please. Oh. I have a feeling I shouldn't have done and If I'm going to end up, you're going to teleport me into his room alone. <laughs> 33. 33. Okay. Dirty three. I'm not. I'm. Oh, man. Oh, no. Everything's fine. I know. It's great. It's all going to work out Everything's in the end. Everything's fine. <laughs> okay. So, you got a 33? Correct? Yep. Okay. You have suffered a teleportation mishap. <laughs> okay. The way you said that makes it sound really okay. Um, well, it might not be. I need you to roll me a D8 followed by two D6s. I got a four. Okay. A four. And a four. Okay. So, first of all, you land... Um, so you know where you think Oscar Yorn is, <laughs> but you now will land. Um, and sorry, roll one more uh, d6 as well, please. So four and the eight, four and the four, four and four. <laughs> okay. All fours. So you land in the air, 30 feet in the air, 40 <laughs> feet over. <laughs> you pass me the flight stand? <laughs> that, that way. And immediately fall 30 feet down, oh, okay. taking 10 points of bludgeoning damage and landing prone. Ow. And your brain is scrambled and you are stunned. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> and I appear in the room. And Sebastian, um, you <laughs> you do. You appear uh, uh, on tar- uh, completely on target in, in the room. So Work like a charm. So Pluto <laughs> grabs me and is just like, I'm like, we got this. We got this. And then I just appear by myself, and I'm just like... (laughs) And you hear a loud thud in the other room. (laughs) And I muster... Yeah. And in this moment, I muster all of the confidence that I could possibly have. And I just try to stare at Oscar Yarn as I pop into existence there. 
and I hold out my wand and I go, Oscar Yorn, my name's Sebastian Crow, and I'm going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Nice. Okay. So the um the ghouls are the first to act. Oh, uh sorry, actually, uh yeah, the ghouls are the first to act. Responding to the crash in, in the scene, several of the ghouls rush forward. Hello, ghouls. And the, the two in the room leap across the table to assault you, Sebastian. They leap across to attack immediately. Um, and they both attack with their claws. Oh, yeah, teleporting when you can't yep. see. I, I remember now. Okay. Everyone. So you see before you... <laughs> I remember now. Um, the first, here, Here's what you see. As the ghouls leap before you, you can see Oscar Yorin, but he has become a... Before he was a mockery, but now he is something completely different. Oscar Yorin, um, seen clearly and this up close now, you can see that he is still the obese large man that you remember with his uh, kind of uh, like five o'clock shadow scraggly um, pockmarked face, but there are strips of his flesh that are peeling off. And as he raises his hand up, you can see that... Um, he has cut off his own arms and replaced them with the two desiccated hands of the of other mages of the Amethyst Academy. So you can see that one of his hands has someone else's arm, like one of his arms has someone else's arm on it with the five rings on one side and the other has four rings on, on the other. And you recall now that the Archmage did not have either of her hands. Um, so he, oh. so, and they, they look like, they actually look like women's hands that he has put on, <laughs> on onto him. Jeez. Um, and one of them grips the staff of, of power. He has embedded shards of delirium into his chest and back, and they are jutting out of him like armor. And his eyes are just burning with this, with these purple fumes as he looks, he looks over at you. Um, and the ghouls leap across the table to attack. I need a hero moment here. I need I need dice rolls in my favor. Uh, the ghouls get a 15 and a 13 to hit. Shield. You block them with the shield and they're repelled Shh. off uh, from ah. you. Next up is Veil. So I'm 100 feet down. With with my flying, can I use my feline agility? Um, If I run up the wall. I don't see why not. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, have you ever seen a cheetah run? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a cheetah run up the wall. Galloping nice. up, nice. Um, <laughs> gallop up the wall. Um, yeah. And I and I I uh, dash is my bonus action <clears throat> using my um, cunning action. Okay. So if I. So you clear 120 feet. She's yeah. Faster than. Does that, and then do you like bounce off and fly into the air? So the, yeah. yeah, the idea is that I push off. I fly up, and can I see? Okay, make an acrobatics check with advantage because as you're pulling yourself forward, like if, if you've ever seen the astronauts on the space station when they're pulling themselves up w without any gravity, yeah, you kind of tap into the fact that there's the gravity is a little weak here as you start pulling yourself up the bookshelf. So make an acrobatics check. Uh, I do have a level of exhaustion. Okay. So does that give me like equal? Equal out. Yeah. Okay. Um, sixteen. Okay, so. You can increase your speed by um, 30 feet. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, with, with the result of your acrobatics check. So 120 plus 30? Yeah. Okay. So I yep. want to get that far in the air. <laughs> okay. So you're 50 feet up yeah. from, the, from the ledge. From here, you can see Sebastian. You can see Oscar Yorin. You can see all of this going down. What will you do? You notice that there are... S at least six ghouls. You see Paluto stunned in the in the corner over there. Yeah. Two more of Oscar Yorin's constructs and Oscar Yorin himself in a workshop where he has been carving up all the corpses of the uh, members of the Amethyst Academy. And I see this giant thing of delirium in the room, correct? You see shards of gigantic... Much like the river below, there are shards of the meteor and pieces of delirium just as large in this area. I take a magic arrow okay. and I take my first shot and I shoot the delirium. 
<laughs> Which piece of delirium are you going to choose? This big one right in oh, here. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> 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 yes, oh, yes, yes, Mayo. Oh, I get a uh, one. <laughs> okay. So, unfortunately, the shot goes wide um, and does not strike the delirium shark because it's a natural one. Yep. I'm going to try again. Okay. <laughs> Swing. 20. Critical hit. <laughs> get a critical hit. Okay, there is. that's a turn with yeah. another magic arrow. With another magic arrow. We finally okay. got... Okay, take them off my list. Hold on. Uh, okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's probably going to be fine. <laughs> it's probably fine. Okay. Roll your damage against the delirium crystal. I see this happening, and I'm gonna shield my eyes from whatever. Keep your shield up. Keep your yeah, shield up. I, I keep focusing on the shield, and I go. I see her shooting. I'm like, oh. um. Twenty-six damage. Okay, the shard bursts in a. F- um, corona of shrapnel in a brilliant corona of shrapnel arcane energy and pieces of delirium which fly about the entire room um rays of prismatic energy burst (laughs) forth from the exploded crystal um out to a range of um within everything within 30 feet of where the, the crystal was (laughs) <laughs> that looks like pretty good measuring to me. Oh, it misses me. <laughs> okay. The desk <laughs> The desk in front of me gets hit okay. with all Hide these shards. The, desk. I, the, I duck. the effect of this is like a prismatic spray. Oh, <laughs> no. No. <laughs> so, so, is that good or bad? <laughs> Bayo, this is the greatest thing you've um, ever done. This is amazing. Yeah. I'm so happy. And it, so- it, ring, and it rings out across the in- entire room. I need, um, so Veo, you are going to roll a d8 for each subject that has been oh, hit. Let's God. let's start small and work our way up to Oscar. Okay. okay uh, the ghoul? Two. 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 Other ghoul? Eight. Eight? Okay. Big, big guy. We'll come back to that one. Eight. Eight. Oh, okay. Oscar. Oscar. <laughs> Five. Five. Okay. Does he have a little thing beside him? Oh, is there a little creature next to him? It's a hand. Uh, there, uh, there is a little creature next to him. Yeah. That little guy. One. One? Okay. Two, eight, eight, five, and, and one. I think one of the ghoul oh, one of the ghouls one beside there? Sebastian this will probably one? get hit by it. Yeah. Seven. Seven. Okay. So here's what happens. <laughs> Oscar uh, the first ghoul takes uh oh, and the other construct is actually oh, there, there as well. Yep. Yeah. Three. Three. Okay. Now the whole area is now going to be covered in haze for the dura- for the duration now. Um, and as the arrow re- resounds out the crackling light, I'm going to have you, Veo. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to have you and Sebastian both make um, dexterity saving throws. Uh, <laughs> you really like rolling. 27. 27? Four. Okay. Sebastian, you are blinded until you succeed a constitution saving throw at the end of your turn. Oh. <laughs> Do you need to see things to cast? <laughs> I know the proximate area. Yeah, I just okay. throw down the fireball. Yeah. Um, and uh, Oscar Yorn makes his save. Well, he's caught in the area, so he suffers whatever happens to him. So um, I'm not going to make saving throw. So Oscar Yorin is going to take 10d6 cold damage. <laughs> Uh, which he does make his saving throw, but he still takes half the cold damage. 10d6? Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, God. Three, two, three. This is the greatest. <laughs> Nine. Uh, Do you need another one? Okay, one more. One more. No, no, here you go. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is the most dice I've ever rolled. Gross. Uh, okay. It's, it's still awesome. That's amazing. No, it's like I, I, I can already see like three sixes. And... Uh, 39. Okay, so that is half. Great. Okay, he cries out. Um, the large construct, it suffers special. It's struck by two rays. Roll d8 two more times. A d8 two more times? Yeah. Two So. and a one. It takes 10d6 fire and 10d6 acid damage. Oh, okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> and the this? ghouls, the, the two ghouls nearby, yep. are uh, utterly annihilated. <laughs> what did they? T- what did they get hit by? Two and uh, they, one got hit by uh, ten d six acid this guy damage. As well. Yeah. Uh, the other got hit by two rays as well, so we'll figure out exactly what happened to him. Oh, just It'll be cool, but they're going to be annihilated. By it, so. Oh no! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so much math. Um. It's okay. That had a lot of ones. It's okay. It's only half of the damage that w- it will be done. Twenty d six. It's like a <laughs> thirty-eight. Thirty-eight. Yeah. Okay. And then ten more d six. <laughs> 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 That's amazing. That's so much damage. I wish we had landed. Now, specials. on rolling 10 dice at a time. We're here with Jill as she <laughs> rolls 10 dice at a time to determine how much we kill everything in this room. I'll take being blinded. I'm glad I didn't get hit by. You don't want to see what's going to happen. Yeah, no. <laughs> My eyes go blank and I just hear like. <laughs> like all the 40, like 41. <laughs> So, 41. 79 damage? What is that? 79 damage? Total? Oh, wait, it was 41 and what was the other one? 38? 38. So, so, yeah, yeah, so 78 yeah. damage. It is ex- horrifically damaged, but still stands. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Trooper. And then you said another one had two? Uh, and just roll the d8s to see what happened to the one oh. that got hit twice by two rays. Seven. seven. Okay, that's interesting. And seven. Oh, so ignore the duplicate result. Reroll it. Oh, oh. Uh, yeah, it's annihilated by acid damage, but it also technically would have turned to stone. <laughs> uh, and the last construct, it takes... Um, I'm just going to have it take another 39 okay. uh, of the damage, So just because I don't want to have yeah. you roll that many dice again. So much math. So it takes the lightning damage. I have damage. that one little bronze one? Close. Very nicely done. Well Is done, Is that the position Veo. that you'd like to hold, Veo, or would you like to move I anymore? did all my movement, so... <laughs> okay. Yes, I will stay there. You okay. run as fast as we teleport. <laughs> uh, Pluto, you are stunned, but the stun is over now. Okay. Okay. Yay. I stand up. Yeah. Ow. Oscar Yorin um, clutches his side ch- a- 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 as the frostbite grips through his-, his body, and he looks at that, and he yells back, Do you have any idea how valuable that was? My work! I'll kill you! Die! You said that before. And he casts Finger of Death at you, Veo. <laughs> Did I die? Make a constitution saving throw. <laughs> oh, make the constitution saving throw. You can do it. 18. 18. That is a successful saving <laughs> oh, throw. Oh, <laughs> Veo. You take half damage. Oh, gosh. Uh, it's a 10. 20. I'll be okay. I'll be okay. I'll be, I'll be all right. I did a lot of damage to them. It makes sense that they would do a lot of damage to me. You know. You, if you, if you die from that, what happens? I, I don't. No, I'm nervous. I'm really nervous. Finger do of I death. float in so the air? So the full damage of it would have been 75 damage. Yeah, I would have. Died. So that's hab, which is 33 necrotic damage. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, oh my god. I couldn't have handled. I couldn't have handled what was going to happen. Yeah, fires it. Yeah, he's got to move closer to get you in range. So he waddles across the room, storming forward like he's gesturing at his ruined workshop and uh, carrying the staff in his hand. And he just points at you as this black and green beam comes straight from his finger, strikes you in the heart. And you just feel like in, in the I moment. I aged again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is not the first time this has happened. <laughs> Okay, um, and he's walking through the haze and the smoke, and he's just, and he just breathes in the air of the crystals, as if he's completely unperturbed by the the radiant energy coming off of it. Uh, and anything else from Oscar Yorin? I don't think so. That's all from him this turn. Uh, we go now to Oscar's constructs. Um, the first of Oscar's constructs. It picks up a boulder and it throws it at you, Veo. Yeah. Um, but it goes completely wide, and the other rushes towards Sebastian and gets a. Uh, Sebastian, you're blinded, so he's got advantage. Doesn't help him. He only gets a 13 to hit. And I still have my shield up. Yes. Yeah. So. Yeah. I'm. I'm lucky. I'm like can't see, but he punches my shield. Cool. Sebastian, it is your turn. Um, knowing that there's all this commotion happening around me. 
I am going to... Oh, no, I can't thunderstep if I can't see. Yeah, you're blinded. Okay. Uh, that sucks. I'm going to... Okay, so... Can you see through anything that you have? Like, a uh, familiar? Oh, my God. Can I see through... You need to spend an action to see through your familiar okay. eyes. Mm-hmm. Um, then I am going to... Um, in my blind confusion, I'm like, <laughs> Oh, um... Reaper, get him! And I pull Reaper, who jumps out of this, like, fiery pit yeah. and leaps at... I think technically you need to see this, see it to su- to summon it, but I might allow this. Um, Let's yeah, see. you have to see the creature within 120 feet. Yeah, you, yeah. Oh, no. So it doesn't work. Yeah, it doesn't work because you have to you have to sick him on a creature you can see within 120 feet of you. Say sick him. I. You got to use these goggles. Like happens. one time you have one to wear time these I have to goggles. Put the goggles on. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's why you just you're always. Blinded. Oh man! Okay, you've really, you've really stumped no, me. No, that's here. okay. You, you got something. Keep looking, keep digging. Okay, I'm going to. I'm just going to like so. Okay, so I step back, and I pull my wand out and just blindly. I'm like, all right, Pluto. I don't know where you are. <laughs> it's gonna get weird. And I point, and I'm just gonna shoot a hypnotic pattern. Out. From okay. Me. okay. Uh, so the construct and Oscar Yorin are in the uh, in the area. Uh, incidentally, the construct is not immune to the charm, and it promptly fails at saving throw. Uh, Oscar though, he gets a twenty-two on his wisdom saving throw. That'll do it. <laughs> so the construct is incapacitated. Oh, Anything else, Sebastian? Um, you know. Now with the construct incapacitated, I'm going to take the opportunity attack from the ghoul. It gets a natural one. And just stumble and forward. I, I run and I probably smash into the ladder. <laughs> and like stumble and like try to find my way to where I heard Pluto. Do you want to drop prone? Not really. Okay. Okay, sounds good. I just imagine me smashing Yeah, smashing over and stumbling. Like, and like holding the bookcase, yeah, like books like falling moving off. Moving the bookcase, yeah. I'm like, ah. Yeah. And can I roll to try to unblind myself? Yep. Make a constitution saving throw. 20. Your vision returns to you. Oh, Woo! thank God. All Is right. Gods? We go to the top of the round. I only think I have one ghoul left. <laughs> and it runs to pursue you, Sebastian, uh, getting a 16 to hit. Oh, there's one over there, too. Oh, oh way over here. Way over here. Okay. Two of them. Yep. Two of them. Oh, yeah. I forgot about oh. them before. So they're going to climb up and they're going to, they're just going to climb up and they're going to get where, right where you put them there, Pluto. Is there another one? Um, and I'm going to cast shield again to block the ghoul. Okay. You do so. Yeah, the wolf climb right up. Okay. Uh, so you block the, the attack from the from the ghoul. Yeah. Sounds good to me. As my vision comes back, I turn around and I'm like, ah. <laughs> Okay. Just in time. Yeah. Veo, you are up. Okay. Question. There's another crystal there. Sebastian is technically within 30 feet, but he's got a big stone thing blocking him. Will he still have the same effects? Oh, you betcha. Okay. I'm not going to do that. Yeah, don't, don't, don't I won't me. do no. I don't want to die. <laughs> um, <laughs> then I aim my crossbow at Oscar Yorin, and I take a couple shots at him. Okay, go for it. Uh, s- 17. Oscar Yorin raises a shield of his own. Ah, shield battle. Hmm. All right, then I re-aim my crossbow at this construct. Okay. Uh, 22. That is a hit. Nice. The one that's incapacitated? Yep. And extremely wounded. Fair, fair. Oh, wait. Uh... No sneak, but you will get everything else. 17 damage. You're incapacitated there. You're able to land a critical, uh, a key shot against the, its spine, and it drops over the table and and destroys what remains of it. Okay. And then I get my third, and I'm going to go for the ghoul that's... Mm. Can I see the ghoul chasing Sebastian? Yep. Cool. I'm going to go for that one. Uh, 10. Uh, that is a miss. I'm yes. afraid. And then I'm going to fly... 
down around where the bridge hits and around the corner. So that way I am okay. out of sight. Sounds good. Out of sight, out of mind. Right. Not really out of mind, but, <laughs> you know, but I'm like around the corner. All right. Uh, Paluto, it's your turn. I recover from what I can only assume is... <laughs> <laughs> Humiliation. Like what happened? Like I woke up and now there's like this pink haze. And yeah, like this, and you see some this li- like, all these lights came flying out. Of it's, like, it's like you just fell out of the boat. And it's like <laughs> the shots are ringing around. The explosions are oh yeah, ringing, ringing in your ears. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and I just see like Sebastian like crawling out of this. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like hole. fumbling around. This yeah, like, yeah veils flying around. And debris yeah. of ghouls chasing after me, and I'm like, oh, oh. <laughs> um, I'm gonna just. <laughs> St- like pick up the pace and run toward I'm gonna intercept this ghoul that's coming in front of Sebastian okay and uh, I'm gonna Ignatius and I get a 15 that is a hit for uh, 11 regular and 7 fire damage you cut the ghoul down the burning blade already cauterizing what is left of its undead flesh and then I, I just look to Sebastian for What's going on? What happened? <laughs> We're going to kill Oscar Yorn. Where is he? Right over there. <laughs> oh. I point back into the mess. I'm like somewhere in there. I oh. think. Uh, and that's the end of my movement. Okay. Um, we go over now to Oscar Yorin, who turns over uh, to... Um, he dies behind the wall. Like There. Um, and sees the, the, the two of you approaching and casts Cloud Kill. That's not good. Funny. And a rolling bank of fog appears over the two of you. I'm going to try to counterspell it. You <clears throat> cannot. You have already used your reaction. Right. Now. I did. At least you can get out of this one compared to the last one we were in, you know. So, uh, that's not good, right? No. <laughs> no, but you can not. see now. <laughs> <laughs> you can see your death. It's fine. Everything's fine. Man, magic is hard. Uh-oh. Right there. Yeah. You can remove the steps for now. To make it yeah. Yeah. flat. Yep. Cool. Does okay. It, get the ghoul too? it does get the ghoul in, in the cloud kill. Good. Okay, and you hear him yell out, my minions, I hold them down and let them choke on their treachery. Um, and he crouches behind the, the wall. Oscar's constructs are, uh, there's still one going and it's gonna run up. It's gonna dash right up in front of Oscar Yorin. And Sebastian, it is your turn. Make a constitution saving throw. You are in the area of poison. Uh oh. Oh, wait. Is it poison? It is poison. We're immune to poison because of Hero's Feast. <laughs> <laughs> you breathe aren't, it in. Aren't you glad you had breakfast this morning? <laughs> breathe it in, yeah. my friend. Good thing we spent an hour eating. I, I breathe it in, and I'm just like, is that the best you got, Yorn? And I am going to just casually walk to the other side. Like, I, I shove past the ghoul. Okay. And I look Oscar in the eyes and I'm like, you're not getting away this time. And I go to cast what I think is fireball. But what starts to happen is my cape, not cape, my cloak starts to bellow back behind me and I lift into the air and my eyes turn black and I call forth a synaptic static. Okay. Oh, wait, sorry. Before this happens, as I'm raising into the air, the hound jumps ah, out of yeah. the pit. Get out of the pit. And grabs Oscar. Yeah. That's my bonus action. Okay. And then, as the hound jumps and bites at Oscar's throat, I erupt with like this scream of energy as synaptic static explodes. Right here. Alrighty. Oscar Yorin sees sees that and he says. Your magic is feeble, pathetic sorcerer, and cast counterspell. He's got to try to counterspell it, so it's a fifth level spell, so I got to beat 15. Yeah? 
Yeah. If can I wait until you roll to decide if I want to counterspell as counterspell? No. Okay. He has to beat fifteen. Yeah. I'm gonna try to counterspell his counterspell. Okay, your counterspell is successful because it's matching his level, and his counter and his counterspell is negated. It's worth it. Ah! It's okay. worth it. Synaptic static goes off, <laughs> and they have to make uh, intelligent saving throws. Correct? Him with disadvantage. Okay. Uh, he gets a 19 with disadvantage. Oh, damn it! <laughs> Son of a chunk. He's so good. Oh, I was I was hoping yeah, for it. Intelligence is. I know. Best I knew it was risky, but butter. that's why I threw the advantage disadvantage. Uh, and at him. the uh, construct utterly fails, and so does the ghoul. Okay. All right. So, synaptic static. So it's 8d6. So he'll still take half damage, but. Yeah. He won't have muddled thoughts, which was really going to impair him. Do you need a... Uh, I yeah, got it. Go for it. I'm going to use one more sorcery point. Okay. Get some of those... Uh... Yeah, I got a few ones in there. Damn this is a dice. cock die, so I'm actually going to re-roll that. And I'm going to re-roll it again. Uh, well, <laughs> I got one more. Yeah, I, I, I got a one out of that. Okay. Uh, Try your best. It's okay. The dice are the dice are making you just work harder in the uh, in the real twenty six. Twenty six damage. Okay, that destroys the ghoul. Yeah. Yep. yep. <clears throat> Construct is still going, and Oscar Yoren does have to make a concentration check. Which she succeeds. Oh. That's cloud kill. Not that it matters too much because the cloud kill is not going to do too much. <laughs> okay. Um, great. Anything else, Sebastian? Uh, Reaper bites him. Okay. <laughs> Get him, Reaper. Get him. Get him, boy. Who's the goodest dog? Goodest dog. Gets uh, 17. 17? That. Uh, that will hit, and he's already used his reaction because of his counter spell. Seven damage. Seven damage. Every little bit counts. Every hel- everything helps. Okay, and he continues to concentrate on uh, on cloud kill. However, great. Okay, um, that's it for Sebastian. Yeah. Yeah. Top of the <laughs> round with the ghouls. So I do have two ghouls remaining. The ghoul turns around and. It tries to grab you, Sebastian. Make a, make an acrobatics <laughs> or athletics check. And it the other ghoul also tries to grab you, Pluto. Hey! I get a 10. I get a 14. You are grabbed. Okay. Uh, where is it? I'm just going to... There should it. be... A, oh, the... No, you... Oh, the ghoul was killed. That's yeah, right. I, ki- I killed okay. the ghoul. Okay, yeah. So oh. that... that um, no, the one... He killed... Oh, I, so yeah, the, I that murdered ghoul that tries one. to grab Sebastian. That's it. It still um, tries to grab me, but like it's upper half, and I just kind of yeah, kick it and away. It's gone. Okay. Um, Veo, you're up. Okay, so I'm behind the thing. Yeah. Um, and there's no angle that I could see Oscar, eh? No, because he's right up beside the wall, the solid wall there. So you would need to either fly much higher than that or much closer than that. Well, because I'm on like ground right now. You're on ground level, which is actually ten feet below. So you would need to probably fly up about 50 feet to be able to... Sh- actually, even then, you have to fly 50 feet up and far further forward and to over. be able to get a shot on yeah. it over the wall. Um, so, and right now he can't see me. No, he cannot. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this door. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to sneak closer... So that way I'm, there's a little kind of nook here. Yeah. I want to hide behind the wall and I want to ready my longbow. So that way, if Oscar comes into play, I let go a shot. Okay. And do you want to use the cunning action to hide? Yes. Okay, cool. Make a stealth check. Okay. You are definitely hit with a natural 20. <laughs> natural. Yeah. Okay. 32. <laughs> Ooh. Alrighty. Pluto, you are up. I see Veo getting into position. I uh, know you don't because you're in the cloud kill. Oh. <laughs> and I'm sneaky. 
I breathe it in. Mmm. Good. Okay, I'm gonna run up the stairs. Okay. Leap off the stairs. I wanna jump the construct. Okay. Um, as you go, you're running up the stairs, um, and you leap over out of the cloud kill. Give me an, because you're, you can't see the stairs as you run up them, give me that a- athletics check with disadvantage. Oh no. Uh, I get a 16. Okay. Um, you are able to run up the stairs, but the stairs will cost you twice as much movement. I accept. Okay. Five. So you can make it here. Can I running jump off of it? Yep, yeah, and leap down onto the construct. Can I get to Oscar? Uh, I think from where you were, you would run out. Unless you're dashing, you're going to run out of speed. I run out of speed. So, okay, I'm going to just try to get to the construct. Okay. Get him. You leap down. I'll give you advantage on your attack roll against the construct. Ooh. As you burst out of this cloud kill <laughs> again, epically. Uh, 21 to hit. 21 to hit. That is a hit. For uh, 17 regular damage. Okay. And 10 fire damage. Nice. You cleave it in twain <laughs> and it is destroyed. <laughs> and then. Uh... Oh, man. Throw your job in. I, I can't make it to him. Um... I'm just so close, but so far away. No range. Yeah, I can I can huck a javelin, but then I have to drop my sword. <laughs> I'm just gonna hold my shield up and stare at him. Alrighty. My hope was just to run up and shove him. But I was too far. Okay. I'm just gonna stand there and look at him. Okay. Oscar Yorin. Hey Oscar. Sees uh, sees the group review. He takes a step back behind Reaper. So it loops around. Does that make him visible to Veo? Um, for the time being, uh, it will make him visible to Veo. Okay. Take my shot. You're going to take your shot? Yep. Mm-hmm. Head up. As he steps back and there's that Now because clear... he can't see me, do I get advantage? Yep. You have advantage on the shot. Uh, 22. That is a hit. Mm-hmm. I still has one ghoul hugging me. I just you're like fine. I've been like pushing him around the whole time. You're fine. Yeah, you're. <laughs> he's just thirty barely. damage. Oh nice. god! Oh, god. <laughs> there it is. There it is. There she is. <sighs> Sneak attack. He, uh, he, he turns around and catches a glimpse at you, Vay, and says, uh, "I thought I killed you. <laughs> Never mind. Nine lives. Still <laughs> with these three first. And he taps the staff of power and casts cone of cold. No! <laughs> He's so strong. <laughs> no! <laughs> I don't I don't have any counter spells left. Um shields? No. <laughs> Hello. Reaper, no! <laughs> so that's gonna get Reaper, Pluto, and Sebastian. You can all make uh uh I believe that's uh constitution saving throws against the cone of cold. Yep. Uh, Reaper gets a four. Okay. I think Reaper's dead. <laughs> okay. Maybe. I mean, could be. No, we'll see. We'll see. Sebastian. Constitution. Yep. <clears throat> Nineteen. Nineteen. And Pluto. I got an eleven, but then I used Indomitable, and I got a twenty-three. So you both succeed, and instead of taking 50 cold damage, you both take 25. What about the ghoul? Uh, the ghoul <laughs> the ghoul gets a natural one and is frozen solid. Uh, Are you and, holding me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say it's actually, it's still, it's frozen solid, so it's still holding you in its grasp. Uh. And Reaper is turned into an ice statue and shatters into pieces. Oh. No, I'll summon another one. Um, and then... Um, Oscar Yorin um, is going to um, step back, <laughs> rush you back behind the rocks over there uh, so that he, no, the, the bigger rock right there. Right. Yeah. Yes. And he's going to take cover behind that. Away okay. from so, Veil. Yeah. Away, yeah. Evil air. Yeah. So that he's, <laughs> so that he's wholly behind. Not for long. Not, not for yeah. long. Yeah. 
and then turn it back the way that it was. He's so scared. Look at yeah, him. Yeah, he's hiding. He's hiding behind the the rocky. <laughs> okay. Uh, with that, uh, Oscar's constructs are both destroyed. And Sebastian, it is your turn. Can I like try to squeeze out of the grip? Now that he's frozen solid, can I like hit and like try yeah, to Yeah, I'll like, say you can down? use your movement to try to squeeze out with uh, an acrobatics check. 19. Okay, it will cost half your movement, but you can squeeze out. Nice, nice. I, I kind of then kite along here to the point where I can see Oscar Yorn. Mm-hmm. And again, I stare him in the eyes and I'm like, you're trying to hide? You can't hide from us, Oscar. And I lift my hand up and again, out of the pit here. Reaper <laughs> reappears. <laughs> and I'm like, Oscar, we're your nightmares now. And it jumps at him. So I'm just going to do an, a quick attack with with uh, Reaper. Uh, who crits. <laughs> that a boy. Woo! So Reaper. unexpectedly, the dog reappears, jumps, and bites him in the face. Uh, so... How are we doing crits right now? Uh, we should have discussed it before the session. Yeah, started. fair. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Fifteen more damage. Nice. That leaves Oscar Yorin bloodied. And then I'm going to throw a web between the rock and the wall. Okay. All over. So at the start of his turn, he'll, he'll have to make a. Dexterity save. save. Yeah. I don't really need that. You get the idea. There's web all up in there. <laughs> Alrighty. There's web all up in there. Looks good. There. Looks good. Okay. Back to the top of the round with Veo. And I rise <laughs> up so I can see Oscar, which is only actually like, what, 30 feet? It's yep. not that far. Um, <laughs> and rise. I look at him and I, uh, I'm actually... I'm going to take my two long bow shots, but I am going to Zephyr Strike. It's just like the wind picks up, <laughs> make it more dramatic. So I get advantage on my first shot. Nice. My long bow. Um, 16. That is a hit. Rah! Uh, uh, uh. Oh, this is, this cool is cool. Okay. Um, 33 damage. Oh. Oh. Beautiful. And I take the second shot. <laughs> uh, 22 to hit. That is also a hit. 23 damage. <laughs> He gasps out as the as the arrows ring into him. Um, just for the record, though, you need to come like Further. about fifty percent forward in okay. order to get make that shot. Get him! No, no, like so that she's on the platform. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like I mean, even up farther, and forward. Even farther, even I don't have, farther, I don't even, even have farther. to be on the yeah. thing. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, she. Yeah. That's there. We are right on top. I'm of I'm probably him. not that high. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. <laughs> and uh, he. he chokes for for a moment and he grits his teeth and he's like i'm going to kill that cat um and anything else there uh with my bonus action actually i'm going to you use your bonus action on zephyr strike oh i did yes you're yeah. true no that's it okay pluto you're up uh i'm gonna i can't get close enough can i uh if you if you Measure me out, uh, Sebastian, but I think you could dash to him. Okay, I'm going to dash right up to him. Okay. Hello. <laughs> and uh, and then that is my turn. He looks at you all. He says, to hell with you all. And he snaps the staff of power in half. No! <laughs> and triggers a retributive strike. <gasps> All of you can make a dexterity saving throw. What? <laughs> 20. 
Eight. I have a question. Eight? Does my Mage Slayer count for this? No. For advantage? No. <laughs> Three. Three. Okay. So, the Staff of Power, uh, he has used it twice, so it has remaining inside it ten charges. So, Pluto, you take 80 points of force damage. Ow. Uh, uh, Veo, you made your save, and you were 30 feet away, so Mm -hmm. you take 20 points of force damage. (gasps) And, Sebastian, you are 30 feet away, so you... And you failed your save. You had an eight. Yeah. You take 40 points of force damage. Oh, my God. I'm fine. Everything's fine. You're not fine. (laughs) I have the Pyraptive Wound Closure. It just I just lay there. Oh yeah, you do. <laughs> I'm just laying there. <laughs> oh my god, the, that makes me feel you have like two percent better. <laughs> he has that thing that like helps him stay alive. He has that amulet that he bought. Oh. We forgot about that. Did, you should it's have fine. taken your potion of uh, fine. <laughs> what's it called? <laughs> Invulnerability? Yeah. I don't need it. I oh, stand man. beside him and he just he breaks it on me. <laughs> it's my turn. <laughs> I think that's where we're going for the <laughs> But wait, don't we need the staff of power? Yep. Oh, you really shouldn't have. Don't worry, I've got an exit strategy if we need it. (laughs) Next week, it's my turn. (laughs) Next week, it's your turn. (laughs) Is this like giving the bomb to the queen? Did we fail? No. (laughs) No, me and Vale are still alive. As the dust and smoke clears, my mangled body. The what the shattered and savaged remains of Oscar Yorin, bits of bone, fragments, and blood, and the shattered pieces of the staff of power on the ground before him. And I slump over to him, and I take the pieces of the staff of power, and I grab Pluto in my arms, <laughs> and I look up at Veo. Are you okay? Uh, okay! And for the record, for, for everyone okay. <laughs> wondering... He did not get teleported to another plane of existence. I am so disappointed. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Escapes yeah. again. <laughs> so that's why you can oh. see the body is there. <laughs> oh. You know, you know what's the most upsetting? He died thinking he killed all of us. I stand up. <laughs> that loser. <laughs> I'm sure we can talk to the demon later and find out what happened we'll just figure out a way to go back in time before this and (laughs) we'll just do the old oh man (laughs) mcu (laughs) i am i was so scared when you broke the staff i'm still scared i mean because i couldn't get close to him that's still Uh, he only had a little bit of health sorry i know bummer it's okay oh my god wow exploding that crystal was really fun that was really cool (laughs) wow (laughs) yeah well, uh, that is where we're going to end the night. A big thank you, as always, to our amazing cast, Jill, Kelly, and Joe, for playing so well this evening. Re- two really tough and exciting battles right there. And a huge thank you to uh, Kyle, who's working behind the scenes to manage the stream. You can thank him for all of the wonderful things that you got to see tonight. Woo! And also a thank you to our producer, Clayton, for keeping us all organized. And always a shout out for Tabletop Audio. Check it out, tabletopaudio.com. It's all free, and it's the music you hear uh, when we're playing Dungeons of Drakenheim. So check it out. Be sure to check out our merch store at the links below for our Teespring store with some of your favorite t-shirts like Yes, 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 uh, Dragon Force. And if you want to check it out, go to bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. If you are enjoying the stream and want to help support our work, please check us out on Patreon. You can find it by following the links below at patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes. We also have a phenomenal Discord community where you can come and chat with us about all things Drakenheim, all things D&D. We even have a private channel where you can talk to Monty about behind the screen sort of ideas and concepts that you want answers for about Drakenheim. And you can just chat with us about anything. So join us on Discord. The uh, <laughs> Kelly and I post new videos every Thursday on our YouTube channel <laughs> where we cover everything Dungeons and Dragons, uh, including advice for dungeon masters and guides for players. I'm, I'm, I'm bl- I was blown away by the staff of power. You'll also find prior episodes from this campaign available for your viewing pleasure there as well. Here comes the radio voice. <clears throat>
Be sure to join us live next Tuesday when we record the campaign live on Twitch. Check us out at 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time in the Dungeons of Drakenheim. Oh,